Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what to get. Soleil. Soleil with risotto? Let's do that. That sounds good. I'll go for that. I don't, I don't really know what Soleil is, but I know it's good. Soul? I know risotto's good. Soleil. Let's go with that. Some tomato balls in the chat box in the bag. All of it's back. It's working free. It's crystal clear, beautiful. It's hot as balls. You can see the front. Windy as hail. Get the skep pots. I don't know if they have that. Um, maybe we can do it later tonight or tomorrow. I will get me some wine. This, okay. I think so. Alright, I'll go with the Soleil Soleil. Let's have a glass of white wine. White wine? This one here. Okay, yes. Is that a glass? Yes. Or? Sorry, and uh, That's a glass. Yes, a white glass. Yeah. White wine. Yes. Okay. And that's it. Sorry. And this. This one, yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You ever had swordfish? I have, I, I ate swordfish, like I think my first day here and it was really good, man. It was, it was pretty good. I, I liked um, sea bream more though. Dad, I'm so sticky. I'm fucking tired, bro. Oh my God, that whole hike like, like sucked the damn energy out of me, Jesus. Uh. Get you guys the good angles like this. You feel me? That's how you guys see it. I, I would have gotten an appetizer, but the portions here are actually really big. I've noticed. Like everything's presented kind of like a fine dining restaurant, so I assume that the portions are going to be tiny but really delicious. But it's actually like a big ass plate of stuff. So, I mean, I, I would get like grape leaves and stuff. Oh, thank you very much. No, it's okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, my friends. If I take a sip of this, I'm gonna get fucked up, I just realized, because I have no food in my stomach. Oh, so that's fucking refreshing though. That's super, super good. Mmm, yum, yum. It's great. She's super fast, super sweet. Yes, she's, she's really, really nice. I've noticed that once the camera came on, I've been having some pretty good interactions. So it either looks like I'm completely lying or the camera is bringing out something else or maybe it's a mixture of both, who knows. Look at the Instagram. Let's just watch them for a bit of time. <laughs> Let's see how they're gonna manage this photo over it. Just smash with optimism, Brit. Kaloreski, Arexi. Uh, Sunday brings out the best in them. Uh, they want to be famous. You have that in common. I don't want to be famous anymore. <coughs> Actually, I don't know, man. I'm still thinking. I came out here to try to figure that out, and I haven't gotten any answers. <laughs> Dude, they're, they're, there's no way they're gonna get a good photo. The wind is like blowing so goddamn hard that it's, there's no way. There's like no way. Let's see. And should I narrate this like planet Earth? Here we have three influencers out here and one of the main functions in the world for influencers. Here in Santorini, we can see influencers from every geographical location around the globe. <laughs> We spot one here with a blue dress. 
a pastel green, and a neon orange. And there they are, giving up. Out in nature, you cannot always catch what you hunt, for the circumstances are out of their own control. It's a shame, isn't it? Out here in Santorini, we're here to eat dinner. <laughs> Come to Da Vinci, the wood the restaurant, to eat the Wizard Wolverine. Commercial break. I'm never streaming and hiking again. That was like the most boring fucking stream ever. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, I was like, <laughs> it was so boring, dude. Like, I was just dying. God, that looks stressful. They're influence friendly there because you see the camera all the time around. Dude, the only people that go here are families and influencers, and that's it, dude. I, I came out here and I barely even take pictures of like myself in the landscape. Uh, you're never boring, thanks. But I think that last stream was not very entertaining. Greeks will hate me. I'm blaming everything on Zeus. Ah. Yeah. That's one of the two types of people that travel. Oh shit, you're right. Families and influencers, me being one. Uh, hey Pierre, I don't think I sent my message in the previous chat. You seem cool. Come back to London. Let's get coffee. Thank you for the invite, but I'm never traveling again. <laughs> I sound echoey. I could be because I'm inside. I don't know. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. It's windy as hell. You just hear a bunch of wind. Ten eighty PR pixels. Hello. You look exhausted. I'm so tired. I'm gonna say it again, but I think you just visited the wrong places. I did. And I just gotta live with the choices, Bree. It is what it is, man. You know? You spent a thousand over one thousand dollars to go to the wrong places. What are you gonna do? But I told you. I don't care. <laughs> uh. Forty. See, if I if I had if I made Kelly Stamps money, this wouldn't even be a problem. If I made Kelly Stamps money, I would be like, oh, whatever. That was only just one thousand. Actually, I don't even care. I just, I did what I did. I spent the money on what I did. The food's gonna come out and it's gonna be fucking great and that's what I'm focused on. The food is gonna be fucking amazing, man. Art history, do dodec atheist. Dude, I remember that shit too. Dodec, yeah. How do I know that? I remember that too. Not Kelly Stamps. Oh shit, hold on, I gotta flip it the other way. No wonder why I've been having trouble reading it. I to put the camera this way. Okay. There you go. Yeah, food, the only thing you don't complain about. Unless the food's terrible, then I'll complain about it too. Uh, the memory's gonna be worth it. You know, it's one of those experiences that like, when it's kind of like rough, you look back at the situation and then you kind of like laugh about it. I'm gonna laugh about the situation where I went to Santorini for a solo honeymoon and rethink my life. Dude, I literally came here for a meditative place to kind of just like align myself. I have no answers. <laughs> There's no answers, bro. It's gonna be hilarious in a year, dude. Yeah, this is like, this channel is like a journal, dude. Yo, you woke up on the good side of the bed. Damn, if this, if you consider this good, then I wonder what I look like when I'm actually feeling good. I will complain about the food because I don't like much food. The majority of food is just not tasty. Are you sure that's the food's problem? Uh, it was already hilarious yesterday. <laughs> You'll have to wander into the wastes over in the far distance. <laughs> Hell no. Um... Hello, Denise. 
Just enjoy the island, don't care about the people. That's what I'm trying. I'm like, I wanted to go up on the cliffside over there, but then there was no data there. So I couldn't stream from up there. So I have to be stuck in places where there's gonna be a bunch of people. There are certain places here in Greece that are only for loud people that like to party. There are also in Greece that are much quieter. Yeah. Yeah. Comedy is tragedy plus time. For your Greek tragedy, it'll form more of a Greek comedy for sure. You know what? You know what's funny? I, I, this is what I'm probably gonna do. When I get back to Prague, I'll probably play Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is all based in ancient Greece. You know what I mean? And then I'll have fun doing it, and it'll it'll make my impression of the place just a bit more interesting, uh, or at least better. Who knows? You wanted to reset the universe was like hi yeah maybe the lesson of learning isn't isn't clear just yet but maybe it will i don't know man soulful said as soon as you get home you're deleting that greek background green screen the green screen version was better i'm not gonna lie the green screen version was you know. Do you think in a way that these streams help you process? Yeah, it's it's very, uh, it's therapeutic in the same way that, you know, maybe even journaling would be for a lot of people. It's just like, a, it's a, it's an actual video log. It's not like a vlog that's all fancy. It's a, it's like writing, you know. Uh, you have a vacation back in Prague. Isn't wonderful, actually? To go back to that city, yes. I really love the place. Um, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm too depressive for this place. It just doesn't work, man. Like, it's gorgeous. I, I definitely really appreciate the aesthetics, man. You know, uh, but certain things just work with certain people, man. That's just how it goes. The lesson is you can't hear your inner self while you stream, when you stream. Yeah, when I hear my inner self, I want to die and cry, dude. <laughs> uh, if the camera's like my face, I would do this too. Nah, it's not about that, bro. Um, I'm just a city boy. I'm a city boy that's into s certain things and a lot more melancholic and depressive. And I get along in places that are more melancholic and depressive. So. You know. The accommodation is probably the best beachside hotel. Like, honestly, I know it sounds fucking spoiled as shit, but like, if you if you actually spent the extra money to get one of those resorts right on that cliffside and you had a hotel room that just looked at the sea, I mean, that's amazing. But I'm stuck in a psychiatric hospital bed with puke green furniture that's the size of a shoebox. So it's not exactly the most, you know, <laughs> mentally fulfilling space to be in. So. Uh, they just couldn't match your energy. Yeah, you know. Um, I'm at the point of, like I'm not like angry about it anymore like yesterday I was angry about it but like now I'm, I'm just kind of like I'm at a point of acceptance you know just it is what it is it doesn't work out well for me because it's just I'm a different person and there are different people a different situation out here you know uh, it's part of the process of getting older sometimes fantasy is better than reality for sure man Santorini feels like I hooked up with the hottest Instagram model that I could ever find and then I actually got to know her and she used me for my money and abused me bro <laughs> speaking of which let's see let's see how they're gonna do with the influencing Should have went with the honey. Take a couple pictures when you get home. Is 
Tell her it's over. Just went to the wrong side. Look at that influencing Brie. Prog wanted to revenge on you for cheating. Yeah, probably. Uh, okay, they, they got their influencing done. The vastness of the water paired with the white is a vague ghostliness if you go about it alone. I, I like that. No, it's great. Like, that's that's really beautiful. Um, I really, I mean, wearing white being all in this, like, white geometric thing, and con it's gorgeous. It's really, like, it's objectively, genuinely, really, really pretty. Um, I, I love it. I love that part of it, you know? I, I left the South Bay when you did. Stuck on an island with no friends, no smiley faces. It's time to soul search. Ooh, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I, I wasn't expecting it to be fried, but I guess I'm eating it fried now. <laughs> this is gonna be rich as hell. Um, check it out. Oh my god, that's really close. They present the food really beautifully here. I'll use this for the vlog. It's a risotto with soleil on it, and it's going to be really good. It's just a little hot to eat something kind of buttery like this. It's gonna be real rich, but whatever. Let's, let's try it out. Mm. What is the stuff at the bottom? It's risotto, and risotto is fucking great. That's really good, but I'm gonna fall asleep after this. Dude, I don't even know if I can eat that whole thing. Bro, it's really rich. I'm like, I might just eat the fish and then just get some grape leaves or something, dude. These in the influencing, they're just, they're, they're literally going there and then I think changing outfits and then doing different photos. <laughs> Look, you have even more influencing here. It's 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 really rich for what I was looking for. I thought it was gonna be more of like a a less fried thing. Uh, but it's really good. I don't I just I don't know if I can stomach the risotto at the moment. Man. Mm. It's really good though. A friend of mine went to that island a few years ago. He regretted it. The worst choice for solo travelers. You need company, Santorini. If you have company, it's magic. People return again and again. I guess that's the case, man. Yeah, some places are really good for solo travel and some places are not. Guys, I can't eat the risotto right now, bro. Fuck. <laughs> I'm just making every wrong choice the thing is it's really good but the risotto is just it's too it's too much man shit this is a post malone song a reggae version mm. 
Real life Assassin's Creed looks different with all the influencers. I know. Yeah, you're jaded. Damn, it looks so exhausted. Hey, eat it for me, please. They want you to pass out walking home. He's gonna be the most Ameri uh, one of the American influencer hotspots of the world. Spoiler alert: He hated that view, though. Uh, you know, I can see myself doing like a Anthony Bourdain thing or like a a travel thing, but I'll approach it kind of like Simon Cowell from American Idol, but not like that dickish necessarily. But I'll complain a lot, and then it'll become like my 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 niche. Like I just complain about everything. So it so when I say a place is really good, that means it's really really good. Yeah, the salad would have worked with the fish. Yeah. Did I get the baklava yet? I did not. Maybe later tonight. Is it lagging still, guys? Is it okay? Enjoy your meal and talk at the same time. Practice. Okay, I'm gonna give another risotto bite. It's too much, dude. It's too much right now, man. It's rich. Look at those birds. See the risotto. Mm. Yes, yeah, Simon wore black shirts too. Mm. The risotto is really good. It's really good. I wish I was in the mood for it. Fuck, man. Um, they're probably hoping for food from the tourists. Yeah, probably. A lot of birds, though. Look at that. Yeah, probably. A lot of birds, though. Look at that. Risotto is really, really good. You know what's funny? The more, the more wine I'm drinking, the more hungrier I'm getting, and it makes me able to enjoy the food a bit more. This, this is a really good food. This is a really good dish, man. It's really, really good. Gotta replace those calories, yeah, the show. Mm. It's really good. Oh my god, it's fucking delicious. Mm. 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 Okay. 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 Now, now I, now I taste it. That's the point. Wine has the needed acidity to cut the richness of the risotto. That's it. I think you're right. Paired, paired with these two, it works very well.
Okay, it's much better. Something Ed being Bourdain in front of our eyes. <laughs> Time to keep going, bro. Mm. I love Anthony Bourdain. Right. If I could have a show like that, that would be great. So to have a show like Anthony Bourdain, man. It's awesome. He was kind of like a rock star without being a rock star, you know? Mm. Okay, this, this is fucking delicious, man. It's, it's really, really good. I, I think I'm also breathing a bit of life back into myself because I'm eating. Super, super, super good, man. Mm. Mm. Okay, that risotto is fucking delicious. There's a lot of a lot of butter on it, though. It's a lot of butter, a lot of lemon, but it, 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 it's this is really good. Um, <laughs> that's why I love him. He's a big part of my love for travel and food. Like the way that he goes about traveling and exploring other cultures is the way that I would like it too. And he's, obviously he's with a film crew and everything, but most of the time he's like alone and he meets a bunch of people from the actual place and kind of like learns about it through that way. Yeah. What's the best meal you've had there in Santorini? I will say, if there's one thing that I really am impressed with this entire country, from what I've, I mean, not the entire country, but like from where I've been through in Greece, the food is like the best cuisine I've probably ever had. Oh shit, the wine is hitting me so fucking hard right now. <laughs> oh my god, the wine is hitting me so hard right now. Restaurant looks quiet for Santorini. They dislike Santorini for being crowded with tourists. Well, I actually found a way to travel, like, where you're not running into crowds. What you do is go to restaurants at four o'clock. This can go for anywhere around the world. At four o'clock, no one is eating at a restaurant, but a lot of restaurants are open. And you, you'll have the whole restaurant to yourself, but it's super slow, which also means that the way they cook your food, they'll take a bit more time with it. They're not just trying to get dishes out. There's way less people involved. There's way less pressure on the, the staff as well. And uh, you get to eat your food in peace. And then you also have a bit more like time and effort to, to absorb or for them to make the food for you too. So we're gonna Malaka dance Malaka dancing back to the hotel. Gonna be careful on the walk down of the cliff. Whew, I feel better. Pretty really good though. I'm not gonna the nature of having a fried fish plus a risotto dish which is full of butter and oil and like cream and like fucking lemon but uh the more i'm getting into it it's, it's really really good man mm. extreme contrast to the fast-paced bullshit we have in america but even in america if you go to a restaurant at four o'clock there's no one there that's why i like to do things in the middle of the day on the weekdays yeah, like people start piling up at the restaurants around 8 or 9 o'clock out here. And I, I've walked around and seen them. And it's like, I would not want to eat at a restaurant around that time period, dude. Like, it, it wouldn't be nice. I wouldn't be able to enjoy the food either. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I, I wanted to make that disclaimer. I think in Spain, you have siesta, which is... TVs everywhere, everyone's on their phone. That's how it is, you're right. You're right, that's how it goes, man. Americans eat, they do not dine. I never thought about it like that, but I think you're right. 
Like, yeah, there, it sounds super pretentious, but I think there is a very big difference between eating and dining. And in America, like, I just would eat. I would just eat, for sure. But I remember when I would first go to Europe and, and have these uh, dishes and experiences at restaurants, it was a whole experience, man. You know, you, you have the view, you have the interior design of the place, you have a, a presentation with the food, you are encouraged to take your time. That's a big thing too. In America, a lot of waitresses and waiters try to push you out as fast as you can. Because like they're trying to get to, to the next table to get more people through more tips and to get people paying more. Uh, eating and shoveling food in your mouth and chewing, dining is a whole experience enjoying the company. You know what's funny? The funny part about this is uh, I remember when I was in America and I would go eat with people, people constantly brought up how slow I eat. Like what I would do is take like a tiny bite like this. Like I'm, I'm gonna finish this risotto, but it's gonna take a while. Cause what I'll do, I'll take a bite like this, like this big. Mm. Oh damn, that's fucking good. Oh, that's so good. Holy shit. I would take one bite like that every like five minutes. <laughs> you just get the taste. I just sit there, you know what I mean? And uh, ever since I moved to Europe and I, I kind of traveled around, I've never had that observation that I eat too slowly. Oh, that's right. I either inhale my food or eat slowly. If I'm at a restaurant and there's like a whole... If I'm at a restaurant and there's a whole situation and it's a really nice ambiance, I eat super, super, super slow. But if I get food delivered to my house or I make myself a dish, I eat it really, really fast. I think the pacing is based on uh, what what the environment is. People tell me constantly how slow I'm eating and it's so annoying. Yeah. You need a good balance where the food gets cold. Yeah, I, I, I just like um, having the food last. what I love about Italians uh, eating is just not eating it's a whole social event with your closest people there's no rush at all yeah um, that is too slow it happens in Europe people get their laptop into restaurants and cafes order food you do like for five hours that but you're, you're never rushed you know what I mean like you can you can chill at a restaurant for a long fucking time too uh, yeah, the view is amazing. This is Morchiba, but it's a cover of Morchiba. Uh, I'm always a slow eater. When I'm with friends, I normally don't order much food because I don't want to make you people wait. Damn. All the jumpers, people out the windows. Uh, eating is hard. If you mindlessly consume it, it will do nothing for you. Yeah, um, it depends how good the food is and the whole experience of the place that you're at. I think it's really dependent on that, if anything. Slow food is about enjoying the food longer as possible. In America, they really want to, yeah, they would give you the check immediately after 30 minutes. They just want you in and out, like a conveyor belt, you know what I mean? Just want you in, eat your thing, pay your thing, then go, next person, next table, you know? Has a local granny adopted you yet? No, I had a granny yell at me, but yeah.
either eat a lot or not, because sometimes I get focused on the food. I don't see the people around me I do that happy dance as well. That's cute. <laughs> what did the Yaya say? Uh, she said that I was sitting in her husband's seat even though her bags were on my actual seat. So the only place that I could sit was the only seat open, which was her husband's seat, but it was my fault for sitting on her husband's seat even though she put her bags on my seat. You're really brave for traveling alone. I love traveling alone. I feel the most natural at it, but certain places I've learned, like this place is much better with somebody. I got my seat though. The Yaya's in Greece are a bit different. People are just different here, man. And, you know, I was angry yesterday because that was just my feelings. And feelings are obviously, the nature of feelings are not the most rational and logical. But that's how I felt, and I think there's a lot of weight to it. But today, now that I have, I kind of got all of that out, I, I'm just more at an accepting stage where obviously I did pick the touristic places, but also just certain, certain cultures just work better with certain people, man. And you know, who I am as a person and the culture that I'm in right now just doesn't work that well. And that's just how it is, you know? I mean, what can I say? <laughs> uh, would I have more fun with Richard or Max? I would have a lot of fun with Max, I think, out here. Richard, perhaps? Uh, I think I would too, but the way that me and Richard interact is not just only fun, it's like, we would enjoy sitting here talking about things, but with Max it would be like fun, fun, you know what I mean? Uh, Romo just told me that pasta that I made for the stream was good. Yeah, so you gotta watch these streams before you cook. <laughs> the Santorini is unique that the whole island is horrible, there's no escape while being surrounded by beautiful solidarity. It's, it's a really weird mixture of feelings. I gotta put on glasses, guys, it's, it's kind of bright. Uh, yeah, it, it's a really weird uh, mixture of feelings because I really do enjoy seeing this beautiful view with the sea here and everything and then the architecture behind me as well. But in terms of like the vibe of the actual island, it's, it's very, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it doesn't really mesh well. And I have to kind of juggle these two feelings while having the food be super, super good at the same time, you know. Uh, there's vampire things, yeah. You know. Are you a member of a winter or summer season? Depends where I am. I like fall and spring. Probably fall. I like fall. Fall's nice. Greece is Aquarius. You can't stand your own energy. That's why they're welcoming but detached. That's so Aquarius. Is, is Greece actually Aquarius? Maybe it's too much Aquarius? I mean, I don't know what it is. Uh, it, I don't know. I don't know. literal hell is like a museum of itself. Everyone who visits or works there is a douche and get angry with yourself and not loving the beauty. It's all, uniquely awful. <laughs> You're gonna love Greece during the winter, maybe. Uh, everyone's leaving already. Oh, good lord. Here is feeling depressed. I'm going. <laughs> Pierre's upset again. Too much for me. I'm going. Bye. 
I also, I think I have to come to terms with the fact that I'm just, I'm naturally a really, really fucking neurotic, depressive person. Like, I try to escape it all the time, but it always comes back around. And I, I think I'm naturally a really fucking melancholic person, and that's just how it is. Get yourself to a better island immediately. Nah, I'm, I'm leaving fairly soon. I'm just, I'm just gonna wait it out. I'm getting comfortable when you're depressed. How toxic is that? But it's just how I am, man. You know, you can't outrun depression. And, and it, I think a lot of my problems come from the dissonance of trying to like fight it and escape it and run it so much, man. You know, and there are things that I obviously enjoy, but like. I think at my core, I'm just naturally a person that just is, is really just more melancholic and depressed. Ditch the scorpion moon vampirism in your holiday embrace Aquarius, sun and sun. It's not a choice. <laughs> it just happens. Does melancholy run in your family? Not at all. My, my, my parents are like super, super, super upbeat and optimistic to the point where they don't really want to like acknowledge anything slightly negative. So uh, maybe what happens what happened was in their unconscious they repressed so much of it that when i was birthed i took all of it you know what i mean trying to run from it won't fix it it makes it worse yeah trying to learn the within this hard running away is temporary solution yes uh scorpio moon and pluto and scorpio is double whammy yeah that's not escapable Alcohol is a depressant, make sure you cut it out. Dude, even if I don't drink, I've done, here's the, here's the thing though, like, you're quite sensitive inside, you can't do anything about it, it's just fine, which is not hurt as much, yeah, and I'm a really, I'm obviously like a super sensitive person, I am a naturally depressive and melancholic, and I've done everything I can to try to level these things out, and I, I, I think it's just a part of my fucking nature at this point, I've literally tried everything fucking you know you've seen my experiences in meditating and making art creating stuff making friends getting along with people eating good food traveling like trying to consciously decide that i enjoy certain things you know you know doing what i can but in the end it's like nothing's gonna just soften all of that in that case give no flips it's like a beast tourist like a true american get drunk on uzo Swim naked with wear headphones and sunglasses all the time. What about actual medication? No, fuck. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna numb myself like that. I might as well just do drugs. You know. Maybe you felt like crying because I was like so exhausted, too much sun. No, no, I, I was like, this this whole situation really opened up some unresolved past wounds, uh, and that's why I was kind of like, like really affected more than usual melancholy is what the ability to appreciate the true beauty that's true and a lot of european cultures go that way uh, you are not you don't need medication you are medication and i'm the magic and the magic word is that i'm a fucking neurotic artist and creative and that's that's been an archetype of centuries damaged fucking broken creative people and, you know i mean i just if anything if this is that's what it's taught me is like this whole situation kind of like made me reflect on these types of things uh, but that being said it's not it's not the only thing i can feel i can obviously be happy and joyful as long as the situation really calls for it you know but i'm not gonna lie to myself and try to convince that everything is like that and I know I don't think I'll ever reach like that zen state everything's positive and happy all the fucking time too I can't believe you're an E I feel you're a closet I like the rest of your design I think I'm a I I am an I but I feel I like opened a gate for an E somewhere there melancholic highly sensitive when it comes to surroundings that does not rhyme with consumer society, I feel the struggle. Yeah, and and you know, Prague is getting more developed over the years, but the consumerist attitude is not so much there. You know what it is? 
Santorini really has a consumerist attitude here. The, I hear a ton of Americans, people are just doing the Instagram flexing. Obviously, I'm on social media too. But I guess it depends on where you're coming from with it. And uh, there's lots of money involved here. You know, it's just... Uh, maybe, maybe what it is too, like I see such a beautiful situation, like, like look at how gorgeous this is. You know, like, like this is like, this whole thing is objectively gorgeous. It's beautiful. Like it, without anybody's opinion to try to convince you, you can look at it without anybody telling you. And it's one of the most beautiful places on earth, for sure. It's one of the most beautiful places on earth. And then when I have to kind of see the micro culture of the place being so consumerist and touristic and then having the locals be affected by it and then seeing how people interact and then me being on the receiving end of it it's really not offensive but it hurts to see you know and when I was talking about like the race stuff yesterday obviously I, I'm, I'm still a bit hurt by that but I think Another element of that is also because of the influx of tourism with bad tourists and affecting the locals and the people that work here, you naturally get boxed in with that dynamic with everybody. Do you get, get, what, I'm, get what I'm saying? So it's like, I was reading online about, because uh, somebody recommended yesterday about not recommended, but someone brought up that there were other TripAdvisor reviews about Santorini and Athens about the racism or whatever. <coughs> and if, if you look up <coughs> TripAdvisor racism, you'll see a few reviews from Asian people and how they were treated. So I didn't feel crazy seeing that. And I was reading it and then I think I kept scrolling and it got to a point that it was saying how I don't want to single out a target group. Let's just say a specific Asian group. You can f try finding it yourself. But a specific Asian group tend to travel in big groups or they travel and they're very entitled and super arrogant and also like kind of annoying and they're not, they're not good to deal with, for example. So, um, naturally, you go to a place that is used to that, and then being somebody that looks like that part of that group, they'll, they'll naturally clump you in. So, obviously, it is based on race, but at the same time, there's another layer to the situation that's also shitty in another way. And, like, that, that's what's kind of a bummer, because... Um, this place obviously has a lot of potential, but to see it kind of muddied up by all of these types of interactions, it's, it's kind of uh, upsetting to see, I think. Uh, have I evened out my tan? You tell me, I don't know. It's a really good example of consumers and contemporary human culture can li ruin literal paradise. Like that's pretty profound. That should be a massive warning to us all. My friends who work there, they've had so many bad tourist experiences that it influenced the way they perceive them, like breaking stuff and not willing to pay. Yeah, so, so, like look at this shit. Like, well, I don't know what the fuck is going on there, but they're holding up a whole line of people to get a photo, you know, type of a thing. You know what I mean? The, the fucking risotto is amazing. So, like, 
as I I think I still think my my anger and frustration from yesterday is still justified because it is race based. I have an understanding of it now. The next day that I'm not so worked up over it. And the tourism is obviously a, a big part of the situation here, and uh, it's upsetting even for me. Not not to be like I'm the one hurt, but it's upsetting for me to see. The locals affected, and how this place is affected by this type of behavior, or just like things in general. Um, so, I I was talking. There was a there's a guy that's near my hotel, and I passed by him, and he invited me in, but not in a fake way. He has elements of Max, but not really. But just to just to give paint you guys a picture, like the kind of uh, openness, but with substance that Max has. This guy has an element of it, but in a very different way. And uh, no one's really eating at this restaurant, but just because of his attitude, and I can just intuitively fucking sense it, because I'm a very intuitive person, and I, I can just feel that uh, he was a real person. So I, I, I ran into him a few days ago, and I kind of I, I went there today for lunch too. And uh, he kind of, him and a, and a waitress there kind of uh, opened my eyes to a few things. And he's Albanian, and the woman that was working there was from Georgia. So they weren't Greek, but they are around the area, I guess. And this dude really, I can sense that he had a heart. And he, he genuinely was like, just trying to connect with people. And like even really, he asked me about me and we had a conversation and we were like, kind of, we're bouncing off. It was the first time where I was able to bounce off with, with somebody here. And uh, it was a good, it was a really good interaction that I came back just to, just to see him and stuff. So, uh, but he was basically saying that even in his experiences with people around here, whether people on the island <coughs> or his co-workers, he really placed value on communication being like a quintessential human element. And he was like, with his accent, he was just kind of like, I don't, under I, I don't understand some people. I think communication is what makes people human, but people out here just they do not want to do that and the attitude is so sad and it makes me so frustrated and stuff like that. Uh, you usually get it, I've always had good experiences with Albanians. So, uh, and, and uh, he was talking about his co-workers, he would kind of, apparently he like tried to do something with like part of the building and he got a giant splinter in his finger here. And it, he had to go to the hospital out here, which they basically did it like super with like what you would imagine. And, like they would just fucking take like a like a fucking scissor and try to like cut his fucking nail open. Like it was like super. There's no technology involved there. And he had to go through all that. And then everybody at work just told him to stay for work. They didn't ask him about his finger. They didn't give a fuck about his finger. They didn't. They didn't give a shit about that whole situation. They didn't. They just could, wanted him to keep working the rest of the day with no warmth there. And uh, I could tell that he was definitely a affected by the situation. And he was like really spilling his heart out to me, almost almost a bit much. But I can tell that there was no one there to actually like give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like I was, the, I was the first person that he's met in however months that he's been here that actually like took a genuine interest on how he was feeling or what he was doing because he was giving me all of these things. And I, and obviously like there's a line, you know, you don't want to hear absolutely everything, but there's a reason why, you know, someone would do that, especially in these parts. And, and he was really like talking to me. You know, and uh, 
we, we connected in that way and you know I really felt for him definitely I mean obviously I give him a big tip and everything but that's besides the point uh, but I guess it that makes me feel less crazy for you know knowing that I'm I'm not the only person that just felt feels a little discarded and dismissed around these parts you know so uh, the communication deprived to find each other quite easily. Yeah, and so, so like, sorry, to, I don't want, sorry, Max, I'm gonna bring you up as an example, but if there was somebody like Max, and he was working at a restaurant, but everybody would treat him like shit, or just ignore the fuck out of him, or just maybe use him, or when he's hurt, never checked up on him, or never, like, you know what I mean? Like, that hurts my heart to even hear. And, uh, uh, he apparently he's quitting the restaurant as of like the next few days so so you know that's how it goes man and um and i'm getting a lot of insight from all this mm. can probably internalize that for the longest there was no reason why he would open up to that extent. He was telling me his upbringing, all these other things. He would, there was no reason why. But I can sense, I can sense in him like, you know, those who have a heart and feel neglected will suffer quite deeply. <clears throat> That he was yearning to communicate and share, and that's kind of what I was doing. Like that, he, he, that me and him literally like were were in that mode, man. You know. Uh. <sighs> Fuck! I, I, I seriously wish, I seriously wish I could just be a fucking influencer taking some booty pic on the sunset on a hot tub, like. It, dude, if you if that's what you're looking for, if you want to go to Santorini just to take an Instagram pic with your fucking hot ass body overlooking the cliff, it's perfect. And if that's all you want, that's it. Uh, that's the poison chalice of being sensitive, intelligent. It literally kills people. Probably sense the sensitivity in you as well. The kind that always recognize the kind for sure, for sure. I like any place that plays Sunday. Okay. Uh huh how easy things would be. Yeah. Um, this place is great aesthetically in terms of that, in that situation. Like, if you just want to take pretty photos and you, yeah, you eat fancy dinners and all that stuff, it's, it's and, and that's where you want to draw the line, it's great. But you know, if you're looking for some enrichment, you want to you kind of get a, a window open to things and stuff, it's not the best place. and. It's kind of ugly what you'll find here. Uh, that's the fucking consequence of a goddamn intuitive, incisive creative mind, man. Uh, I'm sorry about the experience you've had. Uh, it's okay, it's all right, you know. Uh, I'm becoming wiser, I guess. Uh, Hey, Yoka, empath, and deep, Brian. Every place has their ugliness that they try to hide from tourists. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, the thing is, one, I've had, in his situation, like, once they can sense that I'm not just a fucking tourist, 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 they open up and I hear a lot of pain. And uh, obviously it's not pleasant to hear, but it's the truth, you know. Uh, and and this, the, th the thing is, like, this Albanian guy, like, you would never expect it. This, this Albanian dude is like, he has a beard, he's a bit bigger. You would assume at face value he's a bit more masculine. Uh, you know, he's a bit... A bit really straightforward almost imagine like a albanian gangster type of vibe then i ask him what he listens to and he says 
He listens to Pavarito. Wait, what is that? Opera singer. He listens to opera. He listens to opera, classical music, but he also listens to bluegrass. He listens to reggae. He listens to hip hop. He li super naturally cultured person without being pretentious about it too. You know, so Pavarotti. Yeah, sorry. Pavarotti, that's it. That's it. Sorry guys, I'm still American. Um, yeah, so, so that, I think that experience really opened my eyes to a lot of things. Um, it, was, it was quite painful to hear, but it, 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 need, it needed to be heard, you know. Uh, all you seek is within you. Not many people will appreciate that in a place like this. Yeah. Uh, I love how you learn so much about this guy. You're truly paying attention and that's hard to find. Uh, that's why I travel though. I literally travel for these reasons, but I couldn't find that out here. <laughs> Old lady considers great travel experience is pretty inspiring. lighten his load a bit I tipped him pretty fat too really really great guy man um, when you like if you ever get the chance to really meet somebody with a real heart it's a really special thing man and it doesn't matter who they are what they look like where they're from what gender they are when you can sense a real intuitive, authentic heart. I'm not even talking about people that are like, I really care about society. <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm not even talking about people that are just like, I just like, I really care about puppies. And I care about everything. I have a heart. It's that's, that there, is, there might be a heart there for sure. But I guess what I'm talking about is a little bit different. You know what I mean? Uh, Very rare, though. Yeah, what you're telling me is as sad as it's beautiful. Yeah, there's there's a there's a deep seated like melancholy and pain way way deep down somewhere here. Um, still trying to figure it out exactly. Sea water is the healthiest water you can dip yourself into. Thank you for that. Yeah, superficial kindness. Uh, actually, I'm almost done. I'm still eating. Mm. The truly kind, altruistic people. It's the kind of heart and compassion. <laughs> it's the kind of heart and compassion when people are willing to fuck people up for you. <laughs> the carbs have finally hit the brain. Now, okay, maybe not that not that exaggerated but from the same place you know what i mean that that type of compassion and loyalty and understanding you know like i'm not i'm not actually like literally that's not what i'm advocating for but you know what i mean um just take all your enemies with violence Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, it's like a gem to meet a real person connected with beyond superficial and open to each other's worlds a little bit, indeed. I was ready to come to the rescue helicopter last night. Does that count? Yes, it does, definitely. When your dharma is to make things right, whatever you can, the courage to change things that I can, the wisdom to know the difference. Yes. Yes, yes indeed. Um, 
So maybe the place is for your Des Desoliniki. It's full on universities and young people. Well, you're you're uh, a few people have already mentioned Thessaloniki already, and it seems like there's a lot of really great people there. Maybe I should have went there instead. Well, I, I should have went there instead. Uh, so, you know, again, I'm gonna make that disclaimer again. It hasn't affected my view of all Greek people. I'm just well aware of the certain geographic locations that I've been to and the interactions that I have with a certain type of person. So I'm not like trying to generalize all of Greece. I just only speak on what I've felt. And obviously like I feel really intensely, especially if I'm treated a certain way. So uh, is there a homeless crisis? No, uh, well not in Santorini. I don't know about other places. Are you allowed to sleep on the street out there? I don't know, I haven't really seen any homeless people. Uh, they're probably at another part of the island. That's real shit though. Uh, I don't care about why someone's racist to you, I just care that they are. The violence is from communication, yeah. Uh, I understand where it's coming from more now considering the touristic background and a certain Asian demographic that's not nice out here. But it doesn't excuse the fact that you know, I'm still lumped in and treated this that way. But at the same time, I can still maintain the compassion or at least the understanding of why that was the way that it was. Uh, and, and also, it's, it's more of like a conservative uh, culture. There's, there's not a big alternative scene in, in Greece in general, I don't think. Uh, so, you know, it just is what it is, man. It is what it is. That's how it goes. I'm still like the only one at this restaurant, which is kind of nice. Uh, you were beyond amazing, profoundly compassionate to try to understand the motivations. But I think that is also why it's necessary to kind of fully embrace and feel the irrational emotions that might come from certain situations because I don't think I would be able to 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 reach this understanding unless I went through that fucking meltdown yesterday now that that's all out I can actually like sit back and be like okay sure still things are with racially based but there's this also also uh, Daniel, I didn't realize what's going on. You get poor treatment from most of the people there. Yeah, I, I wasn't treated very nicely. Um, but having a bit of context has allowed me to kind of accept the situation a bit more. It doesn't excuse it, but I've, I've accepted it. You know? Mm, really good, though. Damn, I just finished this whole fucking risotto. It's delicious. You have lowered your expectations for normal human interaction. You can cope. Something like that. Uh, we see all sides of every situation. Queries. Yeah. Yeah. It can kind of get exhausting after a while. But I think also what I've learned is that uh, you should learn to embrace gut feelings as they come around. And, and still go through that whole process before you just try to rationalize everything immediately too. With that being said, I still have no idea what the fuck I'm gonna do with my life, but at least I get a, <laughs> at least I understand a certain something now, I have more wisdom, I don't know. It's so rare to find deep human connection. Yes, it really is. And when you can, it's really good to hold on to that. Jesus is in all of us, how about that? It's a fabulous tan, you look more like Greek God. <laughs> Silly. Let yourself feel the feelings first. Yeah, I admire your courage to share all of this with us. I well, hope you guys enjoy it. You ever thought about that people's hearts are completely hidden because of the pain and rejection? Because 
Uh, in today's society, you gotta be brave if you wanna live your truth. Uh, yes, to a certain degree, I, I am one of those people. I hide a lot of that too. Uh, and I think it's natural too, but I actually, I, I've come to the conclusion that not everybody has that depth. A lot of people might say that deep down people are da 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 da, I don't think everyone has that. I genuinely think there are just shallow people or there are people that just don't feel deeply or don't have the literacy to understand anything further. And that's just who they are. I'm not gonna say they're like pieces of shit, but I'm just, that's just how certain people are. Certain people just don't have that capacity. They don't have that ability, or maybe they haven't gone through anything. They don't have any depth. They don't have any experiences in life to, to gain that understanding. It's just, that's just, I mean, that's what are you gonna do? That's the life they grew and that's how they grew up and that's how they are. So that's just, that's just how it is. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of people here are, have a lot of depth and they're a bit deeper. And it's really easy to project that around the world because that's the only way you know how to interact with the world. So when you're a naturally thoughtful person, you look at everybody else and you just naturally, instinctually think that they have the same depth. But it's just not, that's not how it goes. Some people just want to take some influencer photos with their fucking booty out on a sunset and that's nothing, there's nothing more than that. They'll post an inspirational quote but behind it, but I mean, that's just as far as it goes. Mmm, that's so fucking good, risotto. The thing about Korea is you have a low threshold to board. That's why I explain their things in their own way and have a variety of experience. Oh, okay. Become a pretty jaded with people's hold. Deep thinkers and kind hearts are pretty few. Yeah, so that's why it's always very important to notice them. If you have any neurodiversity or sort of trauma, you're going to be more emotional and thoughtful. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Otherwise, what, you like read a book about how to be deeper, like... <laughs> You met those people, right? You know, like they read about shit only, and then like they think they're deeper. You know, no, you gotta, you gotta live it. You know, you you have to like be in the trenches. And reading is good to understand certain things, but like if all of your experience just comes from like just reading about or watching something about, it's, it's not the same, man. Okay, this coffee is so good. <laughs> This coffee is so goddamn good. This ice, this Greek ice coffee is fucking delicious, man. Um, oh, oof, this is the shit. So good. Mmm, <sighs> damn, it's really good. I thought it was a mixed ring. No, it's a, it's like this frappe thing. He called it something else, but it is delicious, man. Mmm, super good. Uh, but uh, so I think the the people behind me are actually. <coughs> Excuse me. A little cardamom spice? I don't think so. But um, the family behind me, I believe, I believe, is the of the place and it seems to be locally owned which is actually kind of surprising because I would think that the the restaurants on the coast like this is like could be like owned by some big company or something like that um, they're really nice here they're really nice so I told them that I would give them a favor by kind of like 
promoting them, so I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys the place. is like I'm pretty lenient with this promotion of stuff as long as you're like treating you well man <laughs> it's like that's it uh, uh glad they're being nice did it cut off of course it cut off See me now? Still here. Yeah, it's funny, at the moment I try to like promote it, it doesn't even show. Well, the place is called Da Costa. Uh, they seem, it seems to be It's still not cutting off. Can you still see it or no? I'm okay. All right. So we were in a pretty extensive conversation, though. What were we talking about? Damn. It's fine here. Good. Got that Oscar glow, looking like a golden globe, dude. Golden boy. Uh, I was watching another YouTube channel, you have to lock your hotel door because the Instagrammers break into people's room. I've definitely made sure I locked my door. I'm pretty paranoid about that stuff, so I definitely have. It got deep as fuck, yeah. And they just, of course, had to cut down the moment it got good. We can go there again. The style for dinner music, Saw Day, then Bossa Nova. Blazing. Yeah. Um, you know. The usual con con about influencers and psychology. Yeah, something like that, huh? I know it gets criticism, but I understand it's coming from as somebody who's experienced trauma is so very much on. Yeah, and then especially when you go down that route, it's hard to pull back and not look at everything so deeply, you know. Uh, words can't describe how much I like the music. You know, the thing is, like, since the time we got here, it's been a really good experience. The food's been really good. The, the people are really, really nice. And then the music is like, what do you say, covers? Relaxing covers of popular songs, sort of a thing. Uh, seen plate smashing. I, do, I don't think I could deal with with that type of environment at this point. Like, just people just throwing fucking plates around and shit. Your family's from Vietnam. Yes, they are. Uh, I saw, I was scrolling on TikTok and I saw a video of 50 Cent going to a Greek dinner. <laughs> and literally, like, the, the the Greek manager, as he comes in, he has his plates, and he just goes and smashes. So you have the plates like this, and you have the other plate, like a jackhammer. This smashes the last one and gives it to 50 Cent to smash, too. It's really funny. Uh, you were basically talking about emotional intelligence is so rare you can't expect it from anybody. Would you guys like to continue that discussion? We could definitely go there. Uh, I might get another water. 
Um, yes, in terms of uh, yeah, in in terms of emotional intelligence, I think it's the reason why it's rare is because it's something that you just you literally cannot teach. You can you can try like watching documentaries and reading about it and, and like. I don't know, writing or whatever, but in the end, it's just one of those intuitive things that you just kind of have to pick up along the way. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm gonna get another wine. I'm, I'm, let's just sit here. Let's just sit here for the rest of the time, period. Excuse me, my friend. Uh, could I just get a, a white wine and uh, another small sparkling water? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree. Emotional intelligence is intuitive. Yes. Have a lovely glass of wine. Yeah, we just chill here. It seems like it has every circumstance basically marked off pretty well. I think if the moment I leave the place, the Wi-Fi is gonna, or the internet's gonna disappear, I'm gonna start complaining. It's gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna run into tourists and influencers, uh, and maybe let's just not do that. Uh, Pierre, how do I become like, you know, a broke ass despite working, how do you become an influencer? That's, I mean, making money and stuff is, is actually a really hard task, and that's still sort of something that I'm finding that at a stage where I'm okay, but it's, I mean, I'm, what, 28 now. So it took a lot of years to put 200% of effort into something that made no money for years on end. Um, I don't drink the local Santorini wines this guy's like, well, I, okay, sheesh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I've been 28 for two years. You guys, yeah. look at all this liquid. <laughs> this is a bunch of a bunch of things that make me run into the restroom more. Are you sure you're not ENFP and ENTP? Okay, this is really funny, actually. Uh, somebody just mentioned this the other day, and. They basically said, if you look up if you look up personality dat database on Google, there is actually a whole page to PRXO, and all of the comments are debating if I am ENTP or ENFP. <laughs> There's a 50 comment thread of people passionately trying to figure out if I'm an F or a T. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny, actually. So anyways, um, so back to what we're talking about, emotional intelligence, um, logic, well, there, was, there was something that I wanted to kind of add on. Oh, but it's about income. Maybe we don't talk about making money necessarily, but I guess I'll quickly just say this. Uh, if you know how to use the internet in any way, effectively you're you're already like 10 steps ahead in terms of you're on your way to make income somehow and you have to utilize that if you're good at the internet you, you're literally at a head start so that's that's the way that's the the, the way of the new economy basically yeah i'm well, I think I think at my core, I'm, I'm I'm very F, but I know how to rationalize what I feel. So I think that's when the T comes in because uh, I feel things really intensely, but also I just I'm able to kind of reflect on things rationally. So it kind of balances. 
I was born with broadband in my umbilical cord, me too. It might be twins. Digital nomads are on the rise. Yeah, I mean, whether, even if you actually have like a real shop with like clothes and stuff, if you're not utilizing the internet, like what are you doing? You know, you, it's like a, what, 80% of your customers will probably come from there. So, yeah, I mean, you're limiting yourself to like 20, like what, 5% of the world if you don't have an e-shop. So, Lumpy says, thank you for the super chat. I think we can model Emotional intelligence and great TLTL, TL, but it should be expected. Who feels it knows it. Okay, you know what? Actually, let's talk about this. So, you, you can't read about emotional intelligence and you can't like learn it through a book. But I think there's uh, a certain way to kind of access these things. And you know what that is? It's something that's dying right now. Guess what it is? What is that one thing that could teach people how to develop emotional depth and intellect? And it's dying at this very moment. Just guess. Communication. Nope. Social interaction. I mean, actually, yes. Communication, social interaction. Yes, but it goes further. Richard has possessed me. Yeah, I'm at an island in the sun with these types of glasses talking about the world. <laughs> Very Richard. Interaction? Yes, that's definitely there. 100%. That's, that's probably number one. Okay, but let's, let's go to number two. What do you think number two is? Trust, dating, eye contact. Here it is, you ready? Art. Art, film, music. Julie just said it. Yeah, there you go. And not entertainment, because I think it's there's a very big difference between art and entertainment. Entertainment is what is saturating everything now. So you have TikTok, you have YouTube, you have even Netflix. A lot of that is entertainment. And there's I think there's a place for entertainment. But uh, it's... It's this, it's approached very differently, you know? Yeah, art, art is dying. And I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that. I mean, entertainment is thriving, and I think the two can be easily misconstrued with one another. But uh, art is my entire being, and tell me it's dying. Art, in a sense, well, okay, for example, if you look at man i don't know a few decades ago or at least a century the common notion of art was so widespread and entertainment was secondary and if anything like there was easily a separation between the two as well and like you know coincidentally being in greece or like greek theater tragedy and comedy and philosophy all stemmed from the thing and and the stuff that they would develop, I think, during this time period was not entertainment necessarily. It can be entertaining, but it often, I think, reflects a deeper element of the human experience that isn't supposed to distract you away from it. So, so maybe the difference is that entertainment is to pulls you away from the human experience when art makes you dive into the human experience. Um, so, but anyway, so now in a world where there's a surplus of everything, everything is entertainment to distract you and pull you away from your, the, the reality of what it's like to live, you know. Uh, entertainment doesn't require artistry or creativity anymore. Yeah, most of the time, not really. It can, but generally it's, I mean, people just hit, like fucking lip syncing to songs and dancing sort of a thing. Uh, you go to school to produce results in politics. Well, anyways, so especially in the last year or two, or I mean, actually in the last whole decade, but specifically in the last year or two, when everything's becoming hyper-politicized, you can't, you're having such limited freedom in terms of what you want to say and how to express yourself 
especially when you want to tackle challenging subjects, which that is the human experience. Uh, the human experience is just a challenging subject overall. And art should be fairly uncomfortable when you're confronting it because you're revealing a bit of your insight. And that's always uncomfortable to be in the inside, you know what I'm saying? But, so, uh, and I think that's kind of what a lot of what I've been battling with recently is uh, naturally being a creative person and being really passionate about artistry and seeing it die a death. It's really sad. <laughs> Maybe it'll come back. It'll come back, I'm sure. But uh, in, a, in, a, in a landscape where everything is entertainment, um, it's really hard for actual artistry to survive. He's in Greece, gets deep and dark about the quality, goes back to probably about 40,000. But that's part, of the, that's part of the circumstances too. Because, you know, here's the thing. Would I be complaining about 40,000 if the, I felt like there was a genuine appreciation for artistry? I don't know, but um, when I see distracting, easy to make entertainment with no substance, making forty thousand, and then you and then you have real artists that are putting their craft into something, and they're not getting any of that. If anything, they're just ignored and brushed aside or canceled or whatever the fuck. Then. You you can't you can't help to look at forty thousand and find the value in that because you're not getting actual artistic integrity or value when you make it. So you might as well look at the monetary value at that circumstance. Oh, here's here's a here's a good here's a good comment. More questions like this: Are you pro or against postmodernism in the twenty first century artistic tapestry of entertainment? I believe everybody needs to appreciate the classics first as a foundation. Damn, somebody's artistically literate here. Okay. Oh wow, that's a good question, man. So, so here's the thing: um, postmodernism is the sign of the times. I don't think it's necessarily that I'm for or against it, or it's right or wrong. I think it's a natural outcome of the time we live in. The music's great, by the way. The time we live in is uh, consumerist and there is a lot of surplus and a lot of extra time, a lot of extra, a lot of everything. So postmodernism is the inevitable result of living in that time period. Like what, I mean, when you deprive yourself of things in general, you have a deeper appreciation of artistry. When you have extra of everything, you probably would appreciate entertainment more, you know? So postmodernism, if anybody doesn't know, it's hard to explain, but basically, it's about deconstructing everything. Uh, it's almost like meaningless, like fireworks. It's a lack of foundation. It's, okay, so really like silly, easy example. So like imagine ancient Greece, right? Everybody has like a foundation to the culture, whether it be the architecture, the Doric columns and shit. Then you have like, maybe the classical Greek guitar, you have the Socrates and Aristotle's, there's like a foundation to the, to the culture there. You have postmodernism, and that's about obliterating and deconstructing all of that. So it's a time period that's post-foundation, post-modern, it's post, it removes itself out of the historical timeline of art and culture. You know what I mean? So it's like you just take like an old gothic building, you just blew, blew the, like you blew the fucking church up and then like you just like rearrange the rocks type of a thing. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. And I hope I'm right. I could be wrong. I don't fucking know. <laughs> so 
psychedelic art considered postmodernism? Uh, not really. I mean, kind of. It's modernized, I guess. Well, regardless of the labels, but uh, so uh, Pollock, Pollock and Duchamp are best postmodernists. Wow, Margatini with an artistic with an artistic background. Who would have known? Okay, so to to briefly explain this. If you guys don't know who Duchamp is or Pol Pollock is, Pollock is the one who basically jizzed on a canvas and made it like the splashy paint, you know? And then Duchamp, uh, he basically put a urinal on, on a, in a podium and then that he called that art, which pissed off a lot of people, but in a, in a way that he was ahead of his time because he literally put something you pee on, a, a urinal on... Is it okay? I think it's back. Please tell me it's back. The dude bros of postmodernism. Back? Okay. They sell white canvases. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You have like the Rauschenberg. Is it Rauschenberg? Rothko. You have Rothkos and shit like that. So let's talk about urinals. Anyways, so let's not talk about it. But basically, uh, that was um, that basically turned. Is it out of sync? Okay. Is my is my audio out of sync? I I can I can fix that real quick. Is it okay? No, it's okay. It's fixed. Okay, cool, cool. Anyways, it's a beautiful view. I had postmodern art cover my walls. I thought it was crazy. So, you know, like, it has its place, and ultimately, it's a representation of the times, you know? And, yeah, so, Zen Yi, dude, wow, a lot of, are like, really artistically literate people are in here. That's, that's really interesting. Okay. Duchamp was the one who popularized the ready-made. It's a modernization of Renaissance to use where the apprentices made the piece, but the master put his name on it and finished the painting. Basically, <laughs> so this guy, this French dude named Duchamp, he he basically took a, a urinal and a broomstick, I believe, or a chair, and and he put it uh, in an art gallery and called it art. And uh, you can interpret it in a few ways. It's like the apprentice thing, but the way I look at it is that it also represents a mass manufacturing and the stripping of the foundation of what art was supposed to be. So he was challenging the notion of what you could consider art. And he opened up Pandora's box. <laughs> but at the same time, it's totally ahead of its time, man. Like, if you look at TikTok and what people in the mainstream consider entertainment now it's equivalent to a urinal on a fucking pedestal you know what i mean so it's like okay for example if you look at the state of entertainment and what people find art now it's pre-made it's manufactured and it means nothing but it's on a pedestal and people applaud it like that that is equivalent to a urinal on a on a pedestal you know what I mean? So, in a sense, like, I don't appreciate that type of art, but I can respect the fact that, in a way, he kind of predicted how things ended up. And then you have Andy Warhol, and everybody knows Andy Warhol. Uh, and there's the Marilyn Monroe neon paintings. 
uh, he wanted to prove that people are brainwashed and appreciating and think it's degrading that people are not brainwashing themselves. Duchamp was not postmodernism, he was earlier. Yeah, but it's still nearer, you know? It's like, I mean, he's like a Dada, Dadaist or whatever. I mean, regardless of the labels, it's kind of within the same time frame. So, anyways, uh, you didn't know I knew this much about art, did you guys? Anyways, so uh, when you look at, for example, Andy Warhol, uh, he also predicted Instagram. <laughs> like, you you actually look at uh, what Instagram is about, and even the aesthetics of the thing in terms of bright colors and all that shit. And he also said that everybody will have their 15 minutes of fame. Like, he, he literally pioneered the concept of Instagram. And regardless of what you think about Warhol's actual art, the neon paintings of celebrities, like what do people do only these days on social media? They scroll through neon images of celebrities that are mass manufactured, that are posted repetitively over and over and over and over again, and they make millions of dollars. And he's too mainstream because he is, and that's the point. He, he is a representative of the mainstreamization, the neonization, the fucking repetitivization of, of the current art, uh, of the current culture, actually, in general. Uh, I love Basquiat. That guy's my favorite, dude. I love that guy. I do. I watched your Enlightened Jubilee video. I paid attention. I wore a Basquiat shirt in that video, too. The Enlightenment led to postmodernism. You know, it's uh, what it was uh, that, so that fucking saying, like, uh, uh, what is it? Hard times create strong people. I'll make it gender neutral. Strong times create strong people. Strong people create easy times. Easy times makes weak people. And then weak people create hard times. Don't take down this live, it's great. So maybe I, I punched the hole through the wall of what this trip was supposed to be about, so. When I was a college student in Madrid, our teacher took us to Prado one day and then to the Modern Art Collection at the US Embassy, another just to make fun of it. <laughs> oh, fuck, it's funny. Uh, when I talk to Americans about French it seems like you're the only possible exception. I studied it uh, in school, but also on my own time. I studied more of it on my own time. Uh, but what was I? I had a thought. It was really good, but damn. Look at the view now, man. Look at that. What's this disdain for the mainstream? What happens when you, the individual, becomes mainstream and disdain yourself? I'm kind of in that, I'm in that situation right now. And it's tough because mainstream is the only thing there is. Even if you think you're in some niche fucking, you know, you, you're in some underground shit, like everything, dude, social media is the epitome of mainstream. It, it, just, everything is mainstreamized. It's just, it's just how it is. That's why I think Warhol was onto something. So, if you really genuinely want to make art and music and film, like, we're, we're at a, a state of, or economy where uh, you, you won't survive unless you tap into that. Dude, you need to teach us more about art. Many of us have no ideas about any of those concepts. Pure college should be a thing. Now that I'm talking about this, I'm realizing how much I actually fucking know about it, and maybe I should. Maybe this is the thing that I need to really start making videos about. Uh, cubism is a symbolism of the current culture. So, if I want to just reach and make an assumption, if I look at cubism, it's probably the beginning of the fragmentation of how we view the world. So, if you look at cubism, it's deconstructing representative art or realism. So, instead of like painting a wine glass exactly the way that it is, you start chopping it to pieces and fragmenting it like Picasso's, you know? So, at that point, it's when uh, we, 
we started fragmenting our, our vision of the world. So it's not necessarily completely deconstructed yet, but it was kind of on its way there. I love watching you talk about art on the main channel. Yeah, there's not a big audience for it, but it, I like it, so. We are a long time out of the cube by now. It's like floating trash now. <laughs> Cubism looks at art from different perspectives. Yes, yes. Try to create the fourth dimension, imagining it from multiple perspectives. I personally love Cubism, and if you look up uh, Tamara Limpika, she was during the Art Deco period. She, apparently she was a Polish painter, and she basically took Cubist uh, concepts but made it really pretty. So Tamara Limpika is her name or technically Polish, then Pichka or something. So um, I like that level. So if you want to use it as a metaphor, it's, a, it's the, uh, the beginning of fragmentation where you're able to look at different perspectives but still have an aesthetic coherent unity to everything. So you can view it to how you view life, right? So you can still look at different perspectives but still maintain a, a center focus where Postmodernism and contemporary art is like a fucking white canvas with an apple on it on like on a trash can or something I don't know like there there is no there's no foundation there's no aesthetic foundation it's not objectively pretty to see it sort of a thing there was a video I watched the rock hero music destroyed off the earth. There's no mysteriousness on social media, yes. Humanism helped me understand how much we influence each other artistically. Picasso is heavily influenced by West African art, deformity in society, yes. Psychedelics could have led to Cubism too, maybe, who knows. Uh, you'd be a great art history teacher. Maybe I should teach, I don't know. The objective preness gets boring really fast. I think we might disagree there. <laughs> I am here for objective preness. Like, if you look at this, this is an objectively beautiful, pretty place, you know? And I think what's good about it is that it doesn't require words. It doesn't require you to justify the, the prettiness of something. And I think when you can reach that part, it transcends everyday reality, sort of a thing. Alexandria of the Cube, and we're gonna have a, we're inside looking out while looking in within the cube. Damn, damn. Okay, son. Okay, I said. I like some postmodern. It's nothing too nihilistic. It's cool to see things from like a million ceramic sunflower seeds in a gallery. That's cool. That's cool. Who? There. I don't know the name of the artist, but it was it Ai Weiwei? Maybe it was Ai Weiwei. Uh, there are a few contemporary pieces that are actually super interesting, but it's very hard to find. Uh, like, if I'm if I'm thinking about the same installation as you're talking about. There's an art gallery where you, you walk in and there's a thousand sunflower seeds and they're all engraved or something like that. It's it's really miraculous to see it actually. But uh, yeah, it's hard to find something like that. With the rising apps that can distort and affect beauty, beautified photos, actually talent is hard to find nowadays. <sighs> this is an intensive conversation, man. Okay, so there, there, I will say there is a line when aesthetics overpower meaning and that's my limit with just pure aesthetics like if you're gonna have something objectively pretty it should be found have a foundation of something as well do you like going to the art galleries uh i used to i used to go to quite a quite a few but nowadays uh not so much Is not postmodern full of meaning, constructing and reorienting the meaning. Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah. I'm not really good at the terms, but I think you're right. Yeah, he, he adds a bit of structure to it, so yeah. 
What do you think art in the future would look like? Just fucking white noise and static. <laughs> or there's gonna be a renaissance or something. <laughs> Started painting a few months ago. This inspired me to write poetry. Yes, yes, that's a good activity. I think there are many. I study fine art. You might enjoy visiting 22, 22. Venice art in Vienna. Maybe, we'll see. I've been to the Met and NYC, not really. I, I used to visit galleries quite a bit, but I think I just came so unimpressed and jaded with a lot of art these days, and especially in galleries, man. You know, like, you go to galleries, and you're like, what the fuck did I spend 10 euros on? You know, you, you, you like, in a, in a contemporary art exhibit, like, what are you gonna see? A fucking person shitting on the floor. You see a painting of a vagina. You see like an apple that's like yellow, or you see like a a plastic water bottle filled with coke. You know, it's just like okay, bro. you know, come on. Uh, King David on Instagram. Okay. classical Greek guitar apparently. I looked it up and I, like I really enjoy it. It's really nice. Uh, are you gonna go swimming with us? Are you swimming around me? Yeah, it's more of a post-truth age. People can dock their pair of photos to look better. There it is to suit the audience. Yeah, something like that. galleries are sort of things a section for the gallery foundation of permanent exhibits yeah that's true there was an artist who made an unmade bed littered with things like a used pregnancy she called it art everyone gets an award though they don't they're winners and losers in talent that's an interesting conversation the idea of good or bad better or worse hierarchies of and I get the I get the idealistic vision of like there's no good or worse it's just different nothing's better or not good everything's the same and we have to appreciate something but that's that mentality has really ruined the quality of a lot of things you know Is it harp? I think harp and classical guitar are made from the same material of nylon, right? No, not nylon. Is it nylon? I don't know what it is. Something like that. Yeah, the view is great, guys. The sun's gonna set soon. It's gorgeous. Check it out there. Luthien just brought up one of my actually favorite contemporary art installations. This is great. Uh, there, there are very few things in like contemporary art that I, I really appreciate. I love this one. I actually almost posted it on my Instagram, but I realized no one would enjoy it. So I saw an art exhibit with a huge AI machine trying to clean blood off the floor with the mop, but each time the blood returning to the spot. So. It's not blood, but it, it looks like it. It's, it's a deeply red liquid, and it's laid out on the gallery floor. And there's a huge machine that's like an arm, like this, like a robotic arm. And what it does is it goes to one corner to scoop the liquid to clean it. And then all of the liquid comes back out. And then the arm freaks out. It goes to a different point, and it tries to clean it. And then the, and then the liquid comes back in. And then it goes to another element, and it scoops it in, and it all comes back in, and it's a pretty depressing art piece, but I think it says a lot. I think a lot of people can connect to what that machine is doing, you know what I mean? Uh, it, 
if you guys know the name of it, please type it in. I just don't know the name of it. We're about going deviant. Yeah. That is a chaotic scene. That's how I feel living these days, you know. so much yeah thank god you guys are here oh wow look at that Probably will come back to DaCosta tomorrow. Like this is a, this is like the perfect spot. There's not a lot of people. The music's great. It's people are really nice here. I'll probably just come back to be honest. Uh, so um, somebody said I was refined. <laughs> the thing is, okay. So it's when I'm doing a bunch of stupid, pointless shit. It's merely not only to entertain, entertain myself, but at the same time, it's the only response to the world at the moment. It's it's Dadaism. It's postmodernist, and it's like, but like, like, what are you gonna do? Try to like bring meaning? You know what I mean? Like, unless you're like Jordan Peterson or like some other fucking guy, like. You're gonna bring like the appreciation of classical aesthetics and philosophy in the world we live in now is like good fucking luck. Like good luck with that. And it's like when you when you add when you live life absurd absurdly or like nonsensically, you probably get a lot further in the world that we live in at the moment. Like this experience is kind of what I expected Santorini to be more like. So it's nice, it's very nice. You have the art history teacher with the Spelucci undertone, there you go. Run so used to their surroundings and be numb to our surroundings. Thank you very much, JHDZ. I feel like I haven't spent enough time with you lately. I hope you find a better find what you're looking for. Thank you for the kind words. The wind actually sounds like the ocean. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous?
Santorini. I've been avoiding that island. Honestly, it's probably better to go to another island, or if you want to go here, you can go with somebody that you enjoy. Um, you've got to be in a very specific set of circumstances to enjoy the situation out here, you know. This is like my first real night where I'm really kind of, I think, more at peace. And, uh, like, okay, like, this situation where I can hear the music, I have the wine here, and I'm, this topic that we're talking about is kind of what I had envisioned in my head in terms of what my time out here would be. So. Uh, artist called Andrea Zitol. She lives on Joshua Tree. She creates by herself living with, uh, with restrictions. As an artist, restrictions something that helps. Yes. If you have too much, if you're unlimited, if you're not restricting yourself in creation, it can actually uh, do the opposite. You actually end up more creative when you place a boundary. I actually have not seen Kiki's delivery service yet. You seem much happier today. I've lived out a suitcase called me for 4.5 years. I know the feeling of being somewhere beautiful. Uh, well, I had... I'm happier today because I have found a place like this, but also I, uh, I learned a lot from my time traveling out here, and it was rough, but I just, I think I came to a place with acceptance a bit more. That's what we envisioned you to be, to be able to be like this, yeah, that's cute. I might look a little rough. <laughs> I feel like I look like just like a bit strung out. Yeah, this is a, this is a true Sunday, man. This is how it should be. So if an artist lives in a cardboard box, technically, you have more of a chance of being successful. No, 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 no. <laughs> come on. We got we got nuance here. You have to have resources, but. When you have resources, but you can find the actual creative process to something that works, but like you can't be living on the streets necessarily. Uh, we have to keep in mind that many of us process out loud. You can have thoughts rolling around your head, but they sort themselves as long as you share them. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, sure. A virtual hot tub. <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go pee again, so I'm gonna hide you guys on this on this chair here. Beer bag.
The weather is perfect. There's like such a cool sea breeze at the moment, and it's gorgeous. It's like if it was like this the whole day, <laughs> perfect. Um, you know, it's funny because it's funny because I try to not stream to enjoy myself and time here, but this has been one of the best nights that I've had, and I'm streaming because I'm able to like be with people I feel comfortable with, and I actually ended up finding a situation. Like I actually ended up finding a fucking situation that I enjoy here. You know? And not bag goes. I didn't bring my backpack around. It's a really safe place out here, I think. Temperature will fall in the next few days. We expect some rain. Yeah, I'll be leaving soon. But I'm just... I'm actually really happy to be able to experience a night like this out here because I've had a really rough time and uh, tonight has been kind of what I had idealized in my head of what this place would be so you know yeah, this is beautiful man my time in the meantime it's all about the people it really is man it really is it really is uh, it'd be great if you made more streams like this in the future I'll try I'll go to Prague and you know do what I can uh, but I don't know it's really beautiful man just like that I was trying to find. My tent is fantastic, thank you. better than trying to send you an airlift. <laughs> Until this very moment, I've had a fucking rough time out here. It, it was hard. Like, no exaggeration, it was fucking hard. Dude, talk about ego death or whatever it is, man. It, it was like, fucking mess. It was a fucking mess, man. Wear a mask and yell at people for not social distancing with the life crisis uh, completed. It's the calm after the storm. Yeah, it, that's how it looks, man. Yeah, I was definitely riding a storm for sure. And right now, it's, it's a bit calmer. I think I have that black hawk ready. <laughs> yeah, right now I feel great. Right now it's good. See the boats and shit. Talking about art, connecting with your essence. Yeah, being around you guys, talking about stuff I care about. You know. Yeah, tomorrow I'll probably come back here. Tomorrow I'll come back here. Let me just sit it out. You know what I mean? Stream about the same time and just kind of hang out here. 
It's much better to walk, uh, watch people running up and down in the midst of the parade. Yes, exactly. I agree. The wine helps too. Because I got my spa, I just got out of the shower, rubbing coconut oil on my body, and I'm sitting in Zen. Hey, I'll get a massage. I'll get a massage tomorrow in the afternoon. And then later in the day, we'll do this again. Come back here. You know. And it's going to be Monday, so there's no, there will be nobody here. Nice to know one or two places, a new place, then collect a bunch of random experiences. I agree. I agree. I know, yeah, you're right. Oh, well, now everybody's looking because I have a fucking camera. That's the secret, huh? I put a camera up and then everything's better. <laughs> like, what the hell is that? Stream in front of all your outdoor closest to the indoor streams. Yeah, that's a good way. It's a common, it's an equal combination of the two. That's it. Yeah, they see the camera and they're like, oh, that must be somebody. That's how it goes, right? They're, they're like, oh, he's filming himself. He must be somebody. He must be important. Lastly, you know what I mean? Sons P are surely accommodated in an environment. Sort of, but it's funny because the moment I turn on the camera, it's like everything's better. Like, what the fuck? You know, I try to enjoy my this shit without the camera and it was terrible. And the moment I fucking turn on the camera, it's fine. Uh, a lot of people that wave at us, like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's fine, whatever. Sounds narcissistic to me. Uh, in my case or their case, I literally just do this to talk to you guys. I don't do this for me. I, I literally do this because it's really nice to have you to talk to. Like I was able to go on a whole art conversation and actually have feedback from there. Like you, imagine how hard it is to actually find that. You know what I mean? Camera's a modern mirror. That's why they have mirrors behind bars and receptions. People can see themselves being awful. That's really interesting. Really interesting. It's fascinating, man. That is. The, the internet brings you joy, but also makes you miserable. I know what aspect of the internet makes me miserable, but I also know what aspect of the internet that I enjoy, and that's this. I'm the Greek beautifier. <laughs> I mean, yes, but who doesn't? If you're socializing with people and you enjoy their time, a part of you enjoys them focusing on you as much as they enjoy you focusing on them because that's humanity and that's what people need in their lives, man. You know? Uh, that's the human condition. We need to be seen. And, you know, maybe not to an unhealthy amount, but we need at least an element of that. Tend, people tend to behave differently in front of the camera. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm, a, I'm glad I came across you in Jubilee. Unfortunately, that had to be the first impression, but yeah, I'm glad you found me too. If you use the internet or other people as a mirror for self-validation, don't project yourself, your internal functioning on other people. Yeah. Uh, I, I literally, nowadays, nowadays, honestly, I, I really only use the internet now either to maybe entertain myself with like TikTok or whatever the fuck, just to like shut down. But if I were to, when I put myself out there on the internet these days,
It's not narcissistic on their part. They're straightened out and suddenly this game. Oh, the public now. Yeah, exactly. I agree, Naomi. I, I wanted to make. I wanted to ask you just to make sure if you wanted to claim that they were narcissistic or me. Obviously, everybody has a bit of it, but it definitely like. It's like oh, I'm out here and the camera's on, so I must be somebody. So that means you're gonna start behaving better, and then you'll look at me as if I'm somebody, you know. And a part of me is like, oh fuck yourself. <laughs> like uh, the moment I turn the camera on, I see all of these girls like fucking staring at me, like what, looking at me, like like the good look. You know what I mean? I'm like, get the fuck, get the fuck out of here, bro. I don't even care now, man. It's like, I literally, like, like, ever since I got here, ever since I got here, I've been ignored by every single girl. Now I sit here with this fucking camera, and then I see girls with their boyfriends, their husbands, just girls on their own. Now they're all fucking staring at me. Get the fuck out of here with this shit. I'm pissed. I don't, I'm not pissed. I'm not pissed, but I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Ugh, this is dumb. So tips to every guy out there, record yourself in public. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's the YouTube effect or something. I don't know, man, but like, if the, the camera transforms you to a vlogger with a purpose, not a random tourist, but still, it's like, I'm like, I don't fuck, man. <laughs> draws attention but people are curious they're definitely bad eggs too sure 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 this is it's closer to a westernized area dude people are looking for clout and attention and they want to be around people that are clout and attention Ugh. Fuck my life anyways YouTuber status, like status. That's what it is. It's status. Uh, tell about a prod star, right? Yeah, but they were not like that yesterday. In our behavior. Yeah, totally. Because like, here's the difference. When I'm in prod, people look at me because they're curious. I don't. Even if I don't have a camera, they'll look. They'll be like, oh, interesting or weird, or something. I haven't been stared at at all here. The moment I put the fucking camera out, it was like, oh, who's that? Oh, who's that? He must be somebody, cause, it's, cause like, there's a camera. He must be like a famous. <laughs> owning a camera to selfie sticks like owning a Porsche. I guess so. Did you expect anything different going to an island that's basically sponsored by Instagram? I wasn't expecting much, but I didn't realize the, the fucking extent of it. I didn't realize like, like the extent, you know what I mean? I once live streamed longboarding, people kept looking at me funny. The the thing is, the, the looks aren't judgmental. They're, the looks are like, who's that type of a thing. So annoying. You know why? 
it's it goes back to our last conversation about like you know if you if you have a bit of depth and you can kind of see people for who they are as opposed to what they present as you you project that into the world and you think that everybody should view each other like that but that's obviously not the case and like for example I go to restaurants and I talk to waiters and waitresses. I go to empty restaurants and the waiters and waitresses might be a little bitter, but as long as they're real with me, I appreciate them as a fucking person and I take interest in their, their story. I go to souvlaki or pita stands. You know, you have these these um, cooks or or people that are just kind of ignored or looked, looked uh, or overlooked or whatever the fuck. And I'm out here, like, actually getting to know them and having conversations with them. And I'm curious to know about them or, you know, and they take curiosity in me, too. And they're not fucking influencers. They're, they're not people with status. They're, they're, they're people that cook food or they're, they're waiters and waitresses. And that doesn't fucking matter to me, man. Like, that, that really, really does not matter to me. I do not... Like, I don't judge people in, in that fucking sense, you know? So, it's just frustrating to see the, the contrast, you know? Uh, what they present as and what you hope to get from them. Sadly, people like people that can get something from their presence, not because they see or understand the person. Yeah, exactly. So I think I have a reason to be kind of frustrated. I have a third eye. Some people said they look at you with a fart face. I don't give a fuck. Uh, funny they, they see me without the camera like this I'm a strung out Asian tourist drug addict I put on the selfie stick and camera and now I'm a fucking rock star so many looks of interest as people walk by now <laughs> it's like <sighs> you know what it is I really value the depths of humanity and when that is degraded or neglected I feel very personally hurt there's so much beauty in the depth of existence and humanity and even built beautiful structures and views like this. When I see people neglect or degrade it, it's personally fucking offensive to me because it's not that I hate life. I hate when people don't try to look at the essence of things. And then when you live in a world where you want to look at the essence of things, but you have a constant feedback loop of everything around you not appreciating the essences of things, it forces you to uh, try to adapt to their vision of the world. And then instinctually you start viewing the world that way because you need to belong. Uh, Santorini is not the place where they're observing the pinnacle of humanity. It's the diametric opposite, vacuous shallowness. Like, I feel a lot of parallels with Orange County here. 
and, and Laguna Beach and like Huntington Beach. It's these beach cities that have a lot of money of that attracts people that want to take fucking Instagram photos and like spend their money and like chase clout and shit. And I think that's why I'm personally, I'm taking this trip so personally because it, it, it's putting me back in a place that were what I felt when I lived in California, you know? And like, I hated every fucking aspect of that place, you know? So, um, that's, yeah, this is what it is, man. But right now is okay. Like right now it's fine. Like I, I really enjoy it right now. Like this, this restaurant is, is nearly empty. It's beautiful music. The people are really nice here. And it's a beautiful view. Santorini is turning into new LA. It's like a bit of L, I mean, there's a lot of people from LA here. There's a lot of a rich influencer Americans here too. So, you know. Oh, thanks June, that's really sweet. Do you like astronomy space and staring the night sky? Sure, uh, that sounds nice. And how people <coughs> that are famous, <coughs> that are referred to as somebody and none, as none famous people are referred to nobody. It's sad, it's really sad. Dude, the, you will find the most rich souls and hearts in people that are not famous, that have no clout that are stereotypically working at places that are looked down upon. I have noticed that these situations have bred the most authentic, genuine people, man, with so much depth and so much to appreciate. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of the people that I connect with, a lot of my friends don't have that many followers. They're not influencer people, they're not celebrities, they have no interest in it. They actually don't like it. They don't want to be. They want to have a private life. They don't want to be seen by everybody. And they sometimes tell me, like, they tell me, they talk to me and they, they like, they tell me that, that in a way that it's negative. And I'm like, no, you should be proud. You should be proud that you don't want to be fucking famous, you know? Uh, is that Violet Angel is a lens flare conversely there are people that don't have thought that want it more than anything or just as phony yeah true true sure sure but the people that just don't care for it that don't want it they don't care for it like I don't know I've had conversations that I'll never forget and I've met people that I'll never forget that don't that are people that don't want any of these things, you know? Um, I feel the same with any more magic in my life, and it's a secret. They're forced to see the cloud bullshit through a different lens. Yes, exactly. It's easier not to care for it, and you shouldn't. Maybe, yeah, maybe if I go to October, it'll be different. I don't know, man. Uh, it's like the world of culture is inverted, where the grit and humility is where the soul is, yet we are constantly surrounded with narcissism and told to worship it. Oh, sh thank you very much, happy one. Uh, those of us who know, who know you appreciate the beautiful perspective on life, protected from those who don't deserve these hearts, hey, happy one, thank you very much. Holy shit, thank you. This view is dedicated to you. Oh, wow, that's, that's gorgeous, isn't it, guys? Thank you, happy one. Okay, let's get a better view. Let's walk a little closer here.
I, I really like the, the, the feeling of the time. Yes. Yes. Sorry? I am, yes. Yes. What's your name? It's a Pierre XO. Pierre XO. Yes, yes. yes. That's the second one. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're really nice here. This is a really this is a really nice experience. Uh, sleep over at the chill spot. It, it's okay if I stay here for a long time. Yes. No or, problem. Is, are you sure? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's okay if I come back tomorrow too. Okay. No problem. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, Where are you from? Uh, I'm from California, but I actually live in Prague now. Prague? I live in Prague. Praha? Czech. Praga, Praha, Czech Republic. Yes. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Angela. Angela, okay. My Pierre. Pierre. Yes. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. I, I will definitely, I'll be back here tomorrow. Okay. It's very nice here. And the food is really yeah. good. Thank Appreciate you so much. it. Should I have another one, do you think? Yes, of course. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's wholesome, right? That's all I wanted, man. That's all I wanted, bro. restaurant is called the Costa. Uh, I really like it here. It's, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Here it is. This is much overdue after all this shit. A night like this is all I wanted. Like a night like this is exactly the type of situation I would have liked, man. Uh, I think I'm drinking green wine. I might wake up a bit hungover, but it's okay. It's worth it because I've been, I've been waiting this entire fucking week or this month for a situation like tonight, man. It's like the, the internet's great. The fucking, the people are really nice. It, it, really, it really is what seems like a family-owned restaurant here. Um, it's a beautiful view. It is quite empty. I kind of have it to myself, you know? You know, it is what it is. Chug a huge bottle of water, right? I drank all the water already. We'll go pee again. We we're tight as a coil. Man. I need to roll the big bazooki. Sing about the local life and heroism of Flipperini. <laughs> Flipperini, bro. It's really not hard to be a decent person, respect others. I find a treasure spot in a video game. Thank God, man. Yeah, you know what it, what it is? Is that it's just far enough from the busy uh, touristy city center. And it's right in between, like, it's, it's, not, it's not like a sweet spot in terms of location, you know. Every restaurant in Greek Islands is family owned, no big corpse there. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a bit of, um, not humbleness, but a bit of a, a sense of reality to this personal, like this place. Because you have the, you have the trendy restaurants that are like, or like Instagram restaurants but this place is like I think you can sense the heart you can sense the heart here you know so I sense it from the people they seem very nice and they're not like they're not trying to be like oh you want to come in help sell you like the most expensive shit you know so. when are you coming home I don't know, but people really start like going out around this time when it's nighttime. Uh, yeah, small townish vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I can sense a more small town vibe in the people that work here, but not in like an ignorant way, but like a like a like a warm, real sensation sort of a thing. This, this 
place is tasteful and comfortable. Yeah, you can, you guys, you, you, we all have the same taste here. You guys know, man. Uh, I'm technically not inside. It's outside with windows. Here. Yeah, take a look at that. How gorgeous is that, guys? show you guys the name of the restaurant here. It's the Costa here. Uh, it's really nice, man. Uh, um, I I'm definitely going to come back here tomorrow and stream and kind of do a similar thing. Um, this, is, this is exactly what I hoped to find out here. You know, so I I'm really happy to find something like this, man. Having a view of the town, the tiny church, yes. That's my fucking table now. <laughs> I imagine 280 girls hugging plus Romeo in the middle. <laughs> Kiernan, or Kieran. Relax, buddy. Uh, are you staying for the whole week? I've already been here for almost a week, so I only have a few more days left. But uh, tomorrow, I'll, I'll definitely be here. Tomorrow, I gotta find a t place to get tested and all that good shit too, you know. Thomas is a guy too. Somebody earlier was like, I wish I was a guy on Pierre's stream so I would get special treatment. Sorry, there's male privilege here. Sorry, yeah, I what did I say? What can be seen cannot be unseen, yes. Maybe you can extend your stay. No, no, no. I, I've, I've, I've lived as much as I could here, man. Uh, Luthien, have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Uh, it needs what it needs. We have male immunity. <laughs> oh, show, man. You know what's funny? I feel like in a most most of like guy live streams or like gamer live streams that are guys, like what they'll do. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. I maybe somebody recognized me. I told her to come here, but like, she, I guess she's shy. Um, that's a shame. Are they Hungarians? I don't know. Uh, they, they were waving to me. I think she recognized me. I, I told her to come here, but she didn't want to. She didn't want to come, man. Uh, she'll be back. <laughs> Dude, the, of course, the moment I have my camera fucking on, everything is like fine. Jesus. Uh, she ducked her head. Yeah, I told her to come, man. I wanted to. Oh, whatever. Uh, don't be shy. Well, whoever you are, if you're watching right now, feel free to come say hi. I would love to meet you. like house <laughs> uh, 30,000 cars oh shit be careful Thomas uh, Greek house Greek house a Asian house Asian Asian I stare from a distance and lurk if I ever saw you in person. Uh, 
classy glass. I think I have to be. I've been drinking so much liquid. I've been drinking so much fucking liquid. Uh, there are rumors that Lighthouse is getting a second season. Yeah, of course. Because it was like the most viewed fucking show in Czech Republic. You know. uh, I'm craving a risotto. No, the risotto is really good. Uh, next time I'll get the salmon. Or something else like that, you know. I'm surprised you didn't pee. Me too. You see a lot of Greek cake walking around. That's Bakla. <laughs> Romeo. I'm not supposed to laugh at these things. Stop before I get canceled. I can easily picture a party with a bunch of hotties in the next few days. Yeah, it turns out if I take out a camera, then I'm worth something. Yesterday for magic to happen is actually happening today. Yeah, you know. I would give my left arm to try their oysters. Oysters, that's what I need to try next. That's what I need to do. Uh, Greek goddess, what do you mean by that? All right, I definitely feel the fucking wine right now. God damn, I've been drinking a lot, bro. Dang it. Okay. Boom shakala, block, baklava, baklava, boom baklava, bro. I know last night was crazy, I appreciate the moment much more now. Yeah, I'll come here tomorrow and leave off on a good note in these places, you know what I mean? Uh, I gotta pee, dude. I gotta, I gotta piss. So I'm gonna leave you with this view again. So pretty, man. So, so pretty. Look at that. something I don't know if you guys know this but don't tell anybody I'm a really sensitive person I'm 
fucking sensitive as fuck, bro. <laughs> You know, I'm the social justice warrior. Yeah, I'm sensitive in a way that, uh, you know, I don't have to explain it, you get it. Weepy lush. Wait, men have feelings? Yeah, I don't really count though, like look at me. Uh, I'm tipsy as fuck, bro. Like this wine, I still have so much fucking left. I'm, I'm really feeling the wine. Look at the, like, look at, look at the vibe of the restaurant. There's Nobody here. I'm a, I'm a sentimental. Uh, yeah, I'm a sentimental person. That's that's mostly what it is. That sensitivity comes with li living earnestly. Yeah, you, you know what it is. I think the sensitivity. What happens is it sprouts a severe allergy to inauthenticity. Anything that has like a either like a fakeness or a, a disingenuous energy I like it hurts me and I'm I'm like really allergic to it and, and, and like I can feel it in the pit of my stomach you know what I mean like when I when I see disingenuousness inauthenticity or shallowness it really fucking hurts me, man. You know? Yeah, it tires you out. You're a highly sensitive person or something. Yeah. Um, is he drunk? I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, it has the reason why you're so sensitive when we get it. Yes. When you're that sensitive, it also means you get damaged to the point of numbness, which seems like coldness after a while, but inside you're always sensitive. Yeah, and, and there's a thing like, I think I could be such a, a fucking sensitive person that you, everybody knows, everyone's fucking sensitive. You're all an INFJ, INFP motherfuckers out here crying, all the fucking cancers, all the fucking cancer, rising cancer, ascending cancer, moon, fucking INFJ, INFP looking motherfuckers out here, fucking emotional as shit. You guys know how it is, bruh. And, like, you have to develop a guard. You have to develop a wall. You have to develop a certain mode of interacting with the world that might be a bit more detached and not sociopathic, but colder and detached because you will not survive. <laughs> you won't be able to survive the world because the world is, is is can be abrasive man so you have to you have to like develop some sort of armor or a, or a, a way to function with the world you know what I mean so like I understand it because I do the same shit so that's just how it is man it's like yeah it's walking around with no skin yeah, dude, that, that, that's definitely, that's definitely how it feels, you know. Uh, my wall is too strong, I need like a half wall. Yeah, my walls, super, my walls are super, super, super fucking strong. And I think that's why I kind of feel, I'm gonna cry, or, yeah, dude, I kind of want to cry, bro. I kind of want to cry. No, for real though, I think it's, it's also why I feel more comfortable tapping into the side of me on streams, because I know that everybody here is also fucking sensitive as shit so it makes it a bit easier for me to go there but if I'm with somebody in person you know it's different and it's like it's a little too exposed so I might come off as like asshole -ish, pretentious or detached or something but um, you know you know how it goes I think everyone here completely gets it yeah everybody's intuitive as fuck here you know I think that's a lot of sensitive people are thin skinned. It's tough to be vulnerable and real. It takes courage. Yeah. I'm all fucked up. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> We're all gonna cry. We're all gonna cry. <laughs>
Dude, I'm crying at an empty restaurant with a fucking glass of wine alone, bro. This is not good. Ah, I can't. Dude, no, 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 no. I would, I would, I would, I would get my shit together, bro. Dude, look, look, look at the view. <laughs> look, look at the view. Bitches, look at the fucking view, ho. Fuck. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, man. I can't. Just look at the view, take it in, bro. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> See, bullet from my thoughts. <laughs> Tears don't fall, they crash around me. selfie stick i cannot there's there's i would have i have to go to a place where there's nobody around I, i'm not gonna fucking cry I, alone physically alone at a fucking restaurant right now there's they cannot there's no fucking way no 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 Guys, I'm not here. I'm not self-conscious about crying about around you guys. I'm, I'm self-conscious about crying in physical 3D reality right now, bro. Like, there's still fucking the workers and employees here. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna fucking do it here, bro. Dude, there's a domino effect. No, I'm holding it together. I'm holding it together, bro. Dude, for the lols. Dude, leave. <laughs> Somebody's like, dude, leave. I predicted the alcohol had taken down a week. Fucking <laughs> man, Jesus Christ. I've been a fucking mess ever since I've gone here, bro. Shit. I bet people cried there before Santorini ain't fucking easy. Dude, I'm not gonna fucking cry with only the local employees here that have to show up here tomorrow, dude. I have to show up here tomorrow. I'm not gonna fucking do it, bro. Jesus. subject let me change the subject okay so earlier today i was walking in, in the blistering heat and there was there was thank you very much happy one no 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 happy one don't don't give me donations no donations right now no donations no donations no donations thank you i appreciate i still appreciate it happy one but not right now please thank you i appreciate it happy one i seriously thank you um but poop eye bro poop eye dude okay I I, re I really need to change the subject because I am not gonna fucking ball my eyes out in a fucking restaurant with a selfie stick. If there was nobody around, the coworker and the employees were not watching me right now. I might. If I was sitting, if I was sitting like right outside, maybe I would. I actually I, I think I'm okay crying in front of the stream. I'm not I'm not gonna do it in real life right now, dude. Anyways, okay, so so. Uh, uh okay so in earlier today in the afternoon uh, earlier today 
Okay, just relax. Just take a run, run. Okay, so we're not like a match and incinerate the lies. Okay, so the funny part about all of this was when I was walking at four o'clock in the blistering heat, there was some girl working at a fucking hookah hookah coffee shop as it was outside. Don't don't bring up Helena. Don't bring up Helena, Romeo. That's one of my favorite MCR songs. Anyways. Uh In the afternoon, there was a girl working at the hookah place, and she was wearing a crop top, and she was fucking gorgeous. I'm not gonna lie, she was fucking gorgeous. And I was trying to walk to the nearest restaurant. Oh, dude, I need, I can't, I no more drinking. I was walking towards the nearest restaurant, and then. I was so encapsulated by what I was seeing that my head was turned the entire way and I'm walking through an alleyway or a driveway or alleyway and then I get honked at I get fucking honked at and I look in front of me and the car is like half a meter away from me <laughs> shut the fuck Fuck up, Romeo. I'm, I'm, a, I'm half a meter away from this fucking car of like a Greek family. Because I'm too busy staring at this shawty with a crop top. I, like, I was looking like this and then the car was like right next to me. And I look at him <laughs> with the glasses on. I look at him with the glasses on like this. And then... And the dude had his window down. And the dude has had his fucking window down. And he he like looks at me. And I walk towards the driver's side. And he goes, Like he, he starts he starts yelling at me. He starts yelling at me. What I do, what I do when I get to the driver's side window, I do this, I do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> It was quite possibly the most genuine and intimidating sorry that I have ever said in my life. Bro, I, I literally, I, cause I knew that I was in the wrong. Like I, I totally walked into this fucking car, and and at that point, like I just, I knew that I was wrong. I, I couldn't blame the dude for it. You know what I mean? So I literally looked at him with my glasses on, and I was like. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, like, because because Epitome was kind of mad, but I knew that I was wrong. So and I and I was like, fuck, I totally walked into you, bro. I'm so sorry, bro. So I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Be strong, young guys. Oh, it tears my blue your vision. Yeah, you know, so. From then on, I've been very wary of uh, of where I walk these days. You know, uh, what's going on, Ace? How are you doing, man? You lurking? Shout out to all the lurkers in the room as well. Make sure back to the hotel. We got them safe. No, don't worry. It's really safe out here, and everything's walking distance. So don't even don't even trip. I'll be okay. Uh, 
thug, a thug Pepito, bruh. Dude, I, I'm literally on the verge of fucking tears. I'm, I'm trying so hard to hold it in. I was uh, <laughs> distracted by a booby trap. Uh, did she notice? No, she didn't. Uh, she, we, we, we didn't make eyes. They come into wine time, why do you have shades in the club? Because I'm about to fucking cry my goddamn face off, dude. So I, I can't. Uh, what's going on, Zaya? How you doing? It's okay. I'm doing a little. I'm doing a lot better, actually, Zaya. Uh, it's that Helena, dude. Don't bring up Helena. Shut the, shut the fuck up, Romeo. Romeo, shut the fuck up. Stop talking. Stop bringing up fucking Helena, dude. I'm listening to. Sh stop. Shut the fuck up, dude. Romeo, you can't bring up Helena, dude. Like. All the other MCR songs I can handle, like even I'm not okay, but Helena. was the worst thing I could say. Things are better last so long and good night. So long and good night. Oh god damn. <laughs> Just enjoy. Just enjoy the fucking view. <laughs> Uh, just enjoy these 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 fucking waspy as fucking people. Dude, I'm gonna cry in the club. I gotta cry in the club. I gotta fucking pay and get the fuck out of here, dude. I can't do this shit anymore. I, dude, I seriously need to. I have a cry bubble, bro. Uh, shit. I think I'm ready for the check, finally. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we need to go. We need to fucking go, bro. I need to go. I, I, I'm, I am on the verge of fucking tears right now, bro. I can't. I can't be in. I can't be in a fucking restaurant right now. Thank you so much. back tomorrow is that okay okay great I can stay here for a long time it's no problem is okay you guys have been so good thank you very much I gave you guys a shout out already so look the Costa the Costa that's how it is thank you thank you I appreciate you thanks okay <laughs> I'm gonna go find an isolated zone because I can't do this shit no more. Ciao. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Have a good night. sit up here no one's gonna fucking bother us Stephanie, thank you, Stephanie, for the 
super chat. I saw a cat. There was a cat. Wow, look at the moon. Bro, I'm fucking emo as fuck right now. Like, this is not okay. Oh my god. There's no one here. There's no one here. There's no one here. Perfect. We're gonna go here. We're gonna go fucking here. And we're gonna look at this view. <laughs> Fuck, I'm sad. Now I'm gonna fucking cry. I can't fucking cry right now. Why am I crying? I can't fucking cry. I'm not gonna fucking cry, bro. I can't fucking cry. I'm not gonna fucking let it happen. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I'm so fucking conflicted. I'm so fucking conflicted right now. I like I I don't know how I I feel I'm unraveling. <laughs> this is this is not okay. This is not fucking okay. Bro, holy shit. Oh my god. I'm going to take a seat. I'm going to take a seat on these staircases right here. Bro. Jesus Christ. come from tears don't necessarily come with only sadness or only happiness tears come from a place where there's conflicting emotions and if you notice in movies if you ever cry at a certain situation it's not because it's overwhelmingly sad it's because it's Let me go. 
go through an emotional fucking episode and worry about the goddamn wind. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me hold off on the fact that I'm fucking wasted and emotionally volatile and put you guys in a place that has less wind. didn't hear me what i said was i'm sorry for it being windy let me put my emotional volatility to the side so i can bring you guys to a less windy fucking place do you guys understand that let me stop the wind and stop the fact that i'm fucking wasted in a staircase in santorini about to ball my fucking eyes out so i can bring you guys to a place with less wind does that make sense What's the worst thing I could say? Things are better if I stay so alone and good night. Fuck no. Dude, you know what? Guys, if you if you guys can't hear me, what you need to do is put on your emotional song of choice and just watch me visually mute the audio and then just play a sad melancholic song or a, a emotionally melancholic song and it would be great Mute the fucking audio and play whatever you want to fucking play. <laughs> Lana Del Rey. Marvin's room, bro. Cue the INFJ soundtrack. <laughs> at the moment. This is... 
so just fuck off. Dude, people are totally ignoring my fucking ass right now, and it's great, because I do not want them to give me any attention at the moment. Um, the nights can get pretty chill with the high winds. Yeah, the flannel is saving my ass at the moment. Full show. I feel like playing a song that's happy doesn't go with this at all. Is this is the best day ever? I don't know if that's how I feel. People stop complaining. Yo, it's like, I can have an actual fucking meltdown and on the verge of tears. And half of y'all be like, you sound like a cat mating. It's too loud. Can you cover the microphone? Can you stop? Can you do this? Can you... Dude, you will never, you will never, ever find a fucking stream or video content that's even remotely as real as this. You will never find it. And I promise you, in a million fucking years, you will never, ever remotely similar to this like the fact that i even interact with you guys is taken for granted people going you why are you crying me dude you're lucky that i even fucking read this shit you have how many how many goddamn live streams have people gone to and people don't read a single fucking comment you know what i mean like i give a fuck about y'all and you want to give me shit for giving a fuck about y'all you know what i mean like the like I, I legitimately try to depict the most realistic depictions of the world and reality and it's not all fucking rainbows and, 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 and rainbows, man. like you're gonna hear the wind you're gonna see the shit I'm, I'm literally sitting on the fucking stair step of like Spend time in nature. Pierre, spend time in nature, but go to a place where there's no wind. Fuck you. <laughs> what the hell, bro? Uh, I think people get uncomfortable around raw emotions. They try to digress the stupid details of emotional intelligence. Yeah, of course. Of course, man. People are, I wish I want vulnerability. I wish people were more honest. I wish people were more real with how they feel about things. But not like that. Like, like, this is this has always been a fucking theme. Like, you go on Jubilee and shit, and then I I, I lay it down as honest as possible. In Jubilee. And it's the same people that are like, I wish men, I wish people were more honest with how they feel, and I wish they were more vulnerable. Okay, here's vulnerability. But not like that. I... I want vulnerability that makes me feel good. That's how it is. I want vulnerability that satiates my emotional desires. I want to see emotional vulnerability in a way that makes me feel fucking better about myself. That's how it goes. Give me emotional give me emotional vulnerability that you find in a Disney prince where they confess all of their love to me and no negative feelings. This is the 
most you know what this is the most fucking vulnerable that i've ever been on this live stream and i will go hard right now like you know people say about alcohol it's not about it, it reveals people for who they are and shit and you know that's that's fine but like it's funny that people people pretend that they want authenticity people pretend that they they want real emotions and shit but it's not all fucking rainbows and puppies bruh conditional vulnerability is how it goes now the window behind you is opening a minute minute with the angry yaya yeah, yeah. whatever dude that's just how it goes man you know um they want sanitized authenticity a hundred percent um that is a genius excuse to do whatever you want unapologetic you know and like people on layman's search choose your battles don't complain people be so picky um people can't handle the truth they've been lied to by the blinders and And you know what's funny? Like anybody with a bit of emotional depth knows exactly where I'm coming from. I know that there are a handful of people here that know exactly where I'm coming from when I'm speaking the way that I am. And I appreciate anybody who understands that position. But, you know, there are obviously people that like don't understand it, but they claim that they want what you're hearing, but they don't. They actually don't. don't need a huge I don't need a huge blunt I'm not afraid of an angry yaya approaching me I'm not worried about some fucking white wine that I'm drinking it's the fact that this is actually how I feel about things and I'm being unapologetic and authentic with how I'm fucking feeling about it and if anybody ever claims that they want authenticity these days I will give them this because this is how it actually is that's how it is that's how it fucking is. You want you y'all want claim that you want truth and authenticity, then you're gonna have to confront it, man. You know. <sighs> Just remember, dude, you are loved. Thank you, Scotty, and I do feel loved here, and I genuinely appreciate that. You know, and that's and the tears are not the the budding tears is not the fact that I'm necessarily sad. It's the fact that I know that there are people that are on these streams that genuinely understand the predicament and the situation my, and emotional state. And I know Scotty knows, and I know a lot of people here do. And uh, I'm just a bit more fucking vocal with it, if anything. You know. Thank you, Scotty, very much for the super chat. I had a phone conversation with Spilling Mike Guzman, like a damn press conference. Uh, Pierre's blunt though he doesn't need to <laughs> what I <laughs> uh, only shed tears over why I don't drink anymore maybe I should start maybe um, have you noticed that when you are yourself you're mostly appreciated here by those who truly like you yeah for sure and it's not I don't I don't uh, I don't uh, ignore that I, I, I genuinely recognize it for sure man I genuinely do and you know, of course, like, I, I get that there's a time and place for everything, and like, obviously, like, you wouldn't want to dine, you wouldn't want to dine with somebody that's like this. If you were having a nice fancy dinner and I was having that kind of being like this over dinner, it's obviously too much, but luckily it's the internet, and you, you can leave whatever you want. If it's too uncomfortable for you, you can leave, it's fine. They want a vulnerability you gave it to them, but like, people understand just exactly what they're asking when they tell a man to be vulnerable.
gonna give you the hardest fucking truth there is right now. Let me tell you, Romeo is on the spot. I'm putting my fucking face next to this shit. Okay, when you want a man to be vulnerable, he probably won't give you true vulnerability. A man's vulnerability is seeped in the most existential fucking pain. And you can claim that, you know, gender doesn't matter or whatever the fuck that it is. But I'm telling you the way that it really is. And you're, and a vulner, vulnerability might come whatever way that you might fucking view a certain thing. But um, there's a lot behind the scenes. There's a lot behind the scenes. You know what I mean? So, you know, and a lot, and, and even other men don't see other men in terms of their vulnerability. It's not about women or men against men. It's not about men against women. It's a, even with men, with other men, you don't go there. It's just, it's completely unexplored. That's just how it is. And, uh, you know, people overall, it's it's not about just women. It's, it's about everybody. We are living in a time where people are not equipped to deal with that type of vulnerability. It's just not. It's just not there. Like, maybe in a bit of time, that could be it. But at the moment, it's not going to happen, you know? Like, I, I, I see in the chat, like, I'm not blind. Like, anytime I start becoming vulnerable, things that are maybe a bit more hard to hear or depressing, I see people leave. And, like, I understand why. Because, like, why would you stay around for such things? But that's just how the, the nature of these things are. You know what I mean? Um, we're so fractured living in our little bosses. Boxes. That's why there's a high suicide rate against young men. It's such a shame. That, that's that's the fucking truth. That's like I, I can't tell you other than like any like that's 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 how it is. That's how it is. There's that that's that's what it is, man. You know. This means a lot to me. They're sharing this truth bombs are the night. Yes. Um, vulnerability is messy. You know, it wants to get dirty. Yeah. Like, it's usual for people, for that you feel to spill this content online, people pay $200. So, what happens when a guy, or when you spill vulnerability, oftentimes a few things will happen. You'll be completely ignored. People will leave because they're uncomfortable. People will shame you for your emotions, too. If you want to reveal how much you're hurt over a situation or how you feel on the inside, people will bring out why you're wrong, or they will kind of bring up why you shouldn't feel a particular way when it comes to things. And uh, that's that's kind of the nature of things. And obviously, you can see examples of it. You can see examples of it in real life. You can see examples of the Jubilee video. You can see it on the internet. You can see you can see all of these things, man. And um, you know, as a guy or whatever the fuck you want to call it, you just you just kind of have to just go with it. You know, you have to put up a front. You have to like kind of just fucking just just work with it. And then people start shaming you for being inauthentic. You know what I mean? And then your moment you become authentic, people shame you for that. So it's like it's it's much better to be strong and inauthentic in this situation. Uh, there's always going to be people watching or judge or comment you and emoting here. Yeah, I know. Uh, luckily, understand, and I'm here for the people that understand. You know, it's truly a catch twenty two. My Romeo, my brother, you get it. You get it, man, and I can sense it. Even though we've never talked, talked, but. I just know you get it, man. It makes people uncomfortable to be vulnerable because they don't know how to be themselves. It's hard to look at yourself. It's easy to look at others. Indeed. Um, I think social media has completely altered the perception of emotions. All that stage happiness has really disturbed people to the point anything different is a reject so unhealthy. Yes. It's like super sane monk mode. Yeah, something like that. Um, strong for showing your emotions i mean i have to at this at this stage i think i don't have a choice um that's that's the intensity man and you know what like 
I'll tell you, I'll tell you about the, um, the Albanian that I met earlier. The Albanian guy that spilled his heart to me was really similar. You know, he's been emotionally deprived from, for years, you know, um, the, the Albanian guy that I met with the heart is, he has been emotionally deprived for years. And he spilled everything out to me, which obviously can come off as a lot. But that's the experience of how these things are, man. You know? So, you know, that's just this this is the nature of things, man. That's just how it goes, bro. Um men have it very tough because they're viewed as the protectors and the pursuer when we give our heart we're ashamed in silence and then we're predators to whatever the fuck you want to call it man i don't know and there obviously are really a lot of shitty men out there there's a lot of predators but then the good guys get launched lumped in with that fucking situation and then when we try to be vulnerable and kind and compassionate and caring we're shat on you know so that that's that's the circumstances that's the circumstances of these things and i i i'm that's how i'm just going to deliver it to you straight sort of a thing yeah. had to pull over to say this thanks for your honesty 90 percent of my patients are men they all have the same problem so i'm assuming heather is a counselor or a psychologist then you probably hear the depths appreciate you sharing your heart and soul it gives me comfort that people reveal themselves good men and women don't exist people do it's part of the problem expressing men are prince charming are the beasts we're adults here and i think i think everyone here is a bit more emotionally intelligent in general or hopefully at least you know so um it is what it is uh how are you Pierre? i'm okay you know i think this this trip has brought me to a lot of situ uh, situ has brought me to reflect on a lot of things. You know, it wasn't just a vacation, just to relax. It made me reflect on the depths of the human experience. And you know, that's how it goes. I think a couple hours, people think emotions are overwhelmingly positive or superficial. They don't like it. Think it's bad vibes or contagious. Yeah, you know, you have the, that positivity, toxic positivity, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Everybody's like, like, enjoy your good vibes. You don't want to have your vibe ruined. And I get it. I get it. Like, if you want to have just a nice lunchtime, you don't want the person you're with to just talk about the most depressing shit, you know? So there's a time and place for these types of things. But, I mean, right now, it's late night. It's on the internet. I'm alone on a fucking staircase next to a church, apparently. And if you don't like what I have to say, then you can easily leave. So I'm not going to be offended if you need to leave. So it, it's just how it is. Um, yeah, very American, toxic positivity, yes. I'm a nurse and I work with male prisoners, hyper-yang environment laden with the inability to deal with emotion. You know what's interesting, Heather? So Heather is a nurse and works with male prisoners. So there, there's actually something that I want to bring up to you guys. I want to bring up something to you guys. And I don't think this is ever brought up on the internet or just in general. Remember when I said that I get along with male cooks, whether it be at a pita stand, and then the waiter that I met, he's met like, let's just say, criminals, whatever you might call it. You know, people that are kind of in the underground, for example. 
and in my lifetime I have gone along really well with very masculine figures for sure and Okay, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the internet's a little bit better here. I had to go to a fucking alleyway where no one's around, you know. Um, I think we're good. Okay, so right now I'm in, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm in some parking zone. I don't know what time it is here, you know, but that's just how it goes. Um, it's not as windy in this location too. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> it's been fucking intense, hasn't it? Ah, <coughs> oh, fuck, of course it's lagging.